So before we jump into the Tom tent, TLDR, Tom Foolery, Tom Goonery, compulsive liar, exaggerator of all details regarding his life, internet serial sex pest, whiny cry bitch baby. Tom accidentally showed his partner's nudes on stream. I shouldn't say his partner. It was his E thought girlfriend that he would like send nudes to and sh that he would sex with or whatever. He accidentally showed her nudes on stream. And when he got called out on it, he said, no, this is just a masculine trans person jerking off. But it was actually his discord girlfriend and so i sexually harassed the discord girlfriend mantis because i made this meme my my fucking a thumbnail for our conversation this was the the sexual harassment that i engaged in was this meme and this is what tom fucking said about mantis he said yeah it's a masculine trans person who is maybe taking estrogen or something they're just jacking off and making a really gross face it was meant to be shocking and that's what he said about his like e-girlfriend or whatever the fuck and so I made that my uh, my thumbnail for the last conversation that we had. And he was like, I'm not talking to Ma Oh, sorry, I have to. I'm not talking to Malcolm anymore because he sexually harassed Mantis. And that was... <laughs> I sexually harassed Mantis. I did. It's true. Yeah. Like, Malcolm, the guy that I just debated the other day. I will never talk to that person again. Ever. No ever. way. No I way. will never, ever have a conversation with that person ever again. Ever. Mm -mm. Because they took that quote mm -hmm. and put it on their that thumbnail. quote that quote the quote where you described your e-thought girlfriend that was your quote that's how you described your e-thought girlfriend mm. where it's us debating like non-binary and labels and shit it's called they, a joke they took that quote also, I'm going to be like really soy. We're going to soy out for a second. We're going to be hella soy. Are you ready, guys? I hate when motherfuckers like this, like, are like, they, 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 they. Is it like really, uh, does it really cause you psychic damage to just say he? They, 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 they. Okay. Okay, Tom. Okay, I'm done being soy. So Tom's a pussy. Tom won't talk to me anymore. It's actually probably because he got blown the fuck out, but we're going to do a TLDR for the people who are new to the Tom Foolery universe. Tom Foolery. Okay. Tom Foolery is a Twitch YouTube streamer dude. He used to do Twitch poll shit. He was like Destiny's after stream guy before JSTOC or Justicle or however the fuck you say that guy's name. Before that guy started doing it, Tom would have like all of Destiny's guests on after Destiny was done streaming essentially. And nobody was there for Tom. Everybody was there to watch like Lav, be Lav basically. But anyway. Tom Goonery accidentally showed the nudes on stream, like I just said. So that was a big L, a big oof. Additionally, he pulled up like Kelly Jean's Instagram, who is also another streamer. And she had like bikini pictures and shit on her Instagram. And he was like gooning to her fucking Instagram pictures. And she said, hey, that is kind of weird. That makes me uncomfortable. Could you not do that? And he said, I know you want to fuck me. And apparently that was a joke, I guess, but... Nobody else took it as a joke except for Tom. Uh, so everybody was like, yeah, uh, big no for me, dog. And then it's slowly trickled out over time that Tom is a compulsive liar. Tom will lie about literally anything. Tom claims to have been arrested on RICO charges, which are racketeering charges or white collar organized crime charges. It, there was like a number of charges and uh, there was a RICO investigation at the time. Uh, he actually got arrested because he stole his mom's credit card. <laughs> and I think eventually the one he ultimately got the book thrown at him for was the credit card fraud. Though, um, from the records I've seen, I've only seen evidence of Tom using his mother's credit card at a gas station. I've never seen evidence of the Rico uh, fraud ring that Tom has been talking about. <laughs> uh, and then his his big one is that... He claims to be a professional linguist because he took like a class for a job uh, for a job that doesn't exist, mind you, called linguistic marketing, uh, where they taught him how to upsell pizzas at Pizza Hut. Okay. Yeah, so oh, there was a period where I worked for somebody else uh, and they had they came out with a whole thing. And again, this was not me or my people, but they came out with a whole okay. thing about the words like uh, sizzle and uh like uh different shit like that that we had to start implementing into all of these scripts based on the ways that they were saying that these like uh what what it brought to mind for people and what it is that they took from these and what it is that uh like what it is that it was going yeah. to communicate 
So he's a professional linguist because he can sell a lot of pizzas, you guys. He's uh, the best delivery driver known to man. Also, uh, Tom is famous for inventing the concept of mobile detailing. Tom's the first person to ever have the idea that you can wash someone's car at their house if you bring like a hose to their house and a bucket of soap. To their stuff. Anyways, this was called mobile detailing. I made it up. I just came up with the idea mobile detailing we're gonna do this because i was running a car wash at the time and i i thought i didn't get along with the uh so tom is just he's done everything under the sun he's a genius he's god's greatest gift to earth to the hose he gets he's drowning in pussy um another really fun bit of tom lore is that is it's been confirmed that tom has two alt reddit accounts that he has used in the past to like gas himself up like he would post like what does everybody think about tom foolery with his alt account and then with the other alt account he would be like tom is the coolest fucking person ever he's like so handsome and funny and brave and stunning and he's too normal for all these people and he's like all the girls are all over tom because he's so sexy and it's like he's so humble about how sexy he is but it was actually tom <laughs> on a fucking alt reddit account so the the tom lore is extensive the tom lore is extensive you guys Queeman has a playlist of all of the tom lore this is my tldr version of the tom lore there's probably there's got to be like 20 hours of tom content on Queeman stream Queeman and resevere are the two people that are like the tom historians if you if you are like thirsting for more tom lore if you want more tom if you're like i need the tom tent i'm thirsty for it i can't live without it queeman and resevere have a lot of tom tent this was how many days ago was this i have to look this was four days ago okay so tom is stuck in the lol cow spiral okay and we're all very familiar with this poppy has done this keffels has done this there, you know, the list is endless of people that do this, okay? Where you get caught in drama and you can't let it go. You just can't let it go. And a lot of the time when you're in the lol cow spiral, you're debating things or like arguing things that you can't really win on, right? So Tom wants to essentially, he had uh, a bunch of people in his community after the stuff where he leaked Mantis's nudes, a lot of people were like, this is whack, like I'm out of here. Any hooser, um, one of those people was Sassafras, and Tom is making a Sassafras manifesto for some ungodly f***ing. This drama is like five, six months old. Everybody's moved on to roasting the f*** to him for like lying about being a professional linguist or whatever the f***. They've moved on from like the sex pestery shit or whatever. But we are caught in the lol cow cycle where we can't let it go, and we have to debate everything, you know? There was one point during the Kelly Jean thing where Tom had said that if a girl at the bar called him creepy, he would try to debate her on that. Uh, they asked me if I would debate a woman at a bar if she called me creepy, and I said yes. So that's the kind of like the level of low cowery that we're on here, where we would literally fight to the death our right to sexually harass women at a bar. So we're we're here, we're in the spiral. There is another guy, his name is Ryle Kittenhouse. So Kyle Rittenhouse, backwards. Ryle Kittenhouse is somebody who also has a lot of Tom content. He is also a Tom Tent master historian, okay? And so Tom did call-ins and Ryle Kittenhouse called in and we are blessed with this Tom Tent. Mashallah, thank you, Kyle Rittenhouse, mashallah, okay? So that's what we're gonna be watching today. If Tom wants to actually have a conversation about like how he's a f***ing liar about his linguistic conversations, I will f***ing stomp him in that conversation as well. I stomped him uh, both the times that we talked about f***ing gender because he has no f***ing idea what he's talking about. And I will stomp him on that topic as well because he's a f***ing liar, okay? I have more of a claim to being a linguist than he does uh, because I can program AAC devices in my sleep. So I have more of a claim to that than he does, arguably. So <laughs> literally suck my ass, Tom. Sorry, I didn't mean to sexually harass Tom. I shouldn't have said suck my ass. That was inappropriate of me and I apologize, F's in chat. AAC devices are like augmented assisted communication devices. So if you have like a speech to text app on an iPad communication boards, it's for people who can't talk and can't sign. So if you don't know sign language or you like physically cannot do sign language, um, you use AAC devices. Tom Tent, let's go.
Yeah, yeah I'm pulling it up for everybody else. To, to to well, I'm just pulling up the video so that people can yeah, see. Yeah, you want to watch that? Okay, so there right now. This is this is boring. I don't care about this because it's just so patently absurd. Like this is just such a blatant lie on Tom's part. And anybody who believes Tom, like, legitimately should be institutionalized. So Tom made a gender doc, okay? It's a Google doc, it's 12 pages long. It talks about like the descriptive reality of gender. And at the very bottom of this fucking monstrosity, there is a bibliography. The bibliography is copy and pasted from a YouTube video that discusses these concepts. Very general, but okay, let's talk about the gender doc. Are you aware of a video called 50 Real Differences Between Men and Women by Brave the World? No. Okay, because your reference list for the gender doc is almost beat for beat exactly the same references. In exa exactly the same order, with no intermissions. It's a book? You're saying- No, it is a YouTube video called 50 oh, yes. Real Differences Between Men and Women. Yes, yes, yes. The, the video, yes. I, I, that's, what I, that's where that came from, was the video. The bibliography includes The Second Sex by Simone de Bois and Gender Trouble by Judith Butler, which at the time, Tom admitted that he had not read. And what Ryle is arguing with him about is that Tom did a panel a long time ago where he said that this document is used in universities, that he has videos and papers and essays on gender that are used in universities. That everything left of like center Democrat is left, okay? For Tom, since he was like a rightoid, like conservative, for him, he's super progressive on gender issues. Oh, I know that doesn't mean I he's mean, actually books, progressive. Hold on, hold on, it's hold on. Code. It's yeah, liberal like codes. Like everything that's Hold on. Hold on. Okay, so listen. Earlier, you were saying that I was moralizing the gender thing, which is just a lie. I never at any point moralized it whatsoever. What I was saying is that there's a definition that I use. You guys kept making it about biology. I kept saying, hold on. Where did the I kept saying, come from? Oh, okay, so I work it, in linguistics. science and people are still no, it. Okay, I work in linguistics. Definitions, we come Don't to definitions based on colloquial usages, okay? Gender is a word that we use to describe masculinity and femininity. And so with masculinity and femininity, those are words that we use to describe what is more likely from a male or what is more likely from a female or just what we generally associate with uh, like social, um, uh, what do you call it, like social norms. I have uh, papers on this. I have videos that are used in colleges and in universities. I, the, like gender universities? is my specialty. I, I, I can send it to you. Out. Yes, I can send it to you. I like, this is, my, this I, is I, what I, I focus on. I read on. and so talk I am, to professors who deal with this shit. Like I'd love to read the papers that you're talking all, about because it sounds like fucking garbage. Are all yes. This document could not be used in a ninth grade class because of how poorly it is cited, how poorly it is written. It's not sourced and the bibliography itself is plagiarized. And there is not a shot in the world that, and so Tom goes on to say, I'm not going to spoil it. Tom goes on to say that like uh, gender trouble by Judith Butler and the second sex inspired. It kind of was like a reference or it inspired. He's not actually, you know, sourcing it. He's saying that this inspired me. And anybody who's read Tom's gender document knows that it is physically impossible for him to have read either the second sex or gender trouble and then have that influence his gender doc because it's completely antithetical to Judith Butler's work. Anyway, anyway, that's what they're arguing about is that. And so Tom claims that this paper was used in universities and, f***ing, you know, colleges and shit like that. That's a lie. And it's demonstrated here that that's a lie. But also, um, I would bet like my entire collection. What's something that I really care about? My entire collection of my all of my discord kittens. I would bet all of my discord kittens that he this has never been used. This has never seen the light of day in a collegiate or university setting. And it hasn't, by the way, I just took. I found out who they were talking about, found the sources in their uh, description, and then just copied those because those quotes were influential on the way that I thought about these things. That and mind you, he didn't source the quotes either. He, like, didn't quote anything in the f***ing document. Nothing was quoted. He literally was like, oh, it was just an inspiration. The quotes that I really liked, uh, they inspired it, but that's not how he sourced it. Like, it's very clear that he doesn't have any higher education, and he doesn't claim to have higher education, and it, good, good on him for recognizing that nobody would believe that lie, because anybody who has taken a 101 or even, like, middle school f***ing writing class would know how to properly source a f***ing paper. I learned MLA and APA when I was, like, in ninth grade. Like, there is no excuse it's fucking embarrassing anyway sorry i'm just i'm triggered i'm sorry guys was it now four of the books that i copied there there were four two of them i read myself the ones by luann brizendine i did end up going and reading because of that video the other two it was just the quotes that they read in the video that ended up influencing my uh my doc not the entire book so yeah gotcha so uh what would be the necessity or need to copy the influences but nothing else 
there wasn't a so for them it was sourcing they were sourcing quotes that they gave in the video for me it was an influence all i was telling people is i did a lot of reading on the subject i read a lot of other people's opinions and a lot of other people's ideas and did a lot of studying to understand what other people thought about gender before i went and wrote this and that's that's all I'm doing is just telling people these are the things that I read um, to try to understand how. Haha, <laughs> that's true. It does hyperlink to the fucking Amazon bookstore. Ugh, it's just, it's so unbelievable. And again, there's, you guys, my favorite thing in the whole world is people that are fucking liars and they're bad at it because it's so, I get such bad secondhand embarrassment because every single person is acutely aware that he is full of shit except for him. Like he's like, oh yeah, dude, people are totally believing that I'm college educated and that I know how to cite a paper. They totally, they totally believe it. It's fucking hilarious. It's fucking hilarious. It makes me laugh so hard. Other people's thought of gender. That's the point of having influences on there. Well, uh, somebody else's influences, to be fair, right? What do you mean? What? So, do you, was he wrong about the accusation about the influences? Did he? Did you not lift the influences from their description? I don't know where where we're getting lost here. They and then he always. Their, this their is Tom. Video. This is Tom's debate tactic. He talks. For an unbelievably long time and then you ask a clarifying question he's like i don't understand why we're getting lost and it's like <sighs> i have to put my head because his volume is so fucked like even when we were in discord i had his volume turned all the fucking way up like literally all the fucking way up and i still couldn't fucking hear him tom frottery let's go is just quoting books that's it the whole video is just them saying this book says x y and z this book says this this person said this this person said that that's all the whole video is so yeah so they cited it appropriately some of the quotes that they gave i thought oh that actually makes a lot of sense to me that's going to change kind of the way that i think about this i like that quote so i went and found who they were quoting and just said this is somebody who had a quote that influenced me one if that was true why didn't you just write this quote influenced me and then put the quote instead of saying sources the second sex and i don't know if you guys have ever seen the second sex in real life it's like this fucking thick like i don't think that tom could sit down and read his own it it took him a year to write that 12 page google document between being fucking addicted to adderall and delivering fucking pizzas it took this dude a fucking year to make a 12 page google document you're telling me tom sat down and read a book that's thicker than the fucking bible if you put three fucking bibles together it's about the size of the second sex the only thing that tom can hyper fixate on when his pupils are blown the fuck out and he's shaking like a fucking rat in a cage because he overdosed on his fucking adderall is make these like shitty little overlays for his stream okay my dude could not sit down and read that book even if he tried he told president sunday that he's listening to gender trouble as an audiobook you i'm not trying to be elitist by any means okay you guys i'm not the smartest person in the world okay if there's one thing that's true in this world you cannot listen to a judith butler book you have to read it. You can't listen to it. You're going to listen to the same thing 17 times before you understand it. You have to be able to physically read the words multiple times to be like, ah, oh, like it's, it's like, it's like if you fucking listen to fucking Plato's Symposium on fucking Spotify and you're like, yes, I'm a philosopher. It's like, no, you're not, bitch. That was like white noise for you to go to sleep. You aren't digesting any of that. You're a fucking liar. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I need to calm down. I'm being so soy right now, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should relax. Where the other, um, and I ended up reading two of those books in totality to actually read everything that they had to say on the subject. Okay, so I have the quote here, and you're actually right. So, and I misremembered. So, um, you're aware of a video called 50 Real Difference Between Men and Women, Brave New World, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the reference list for the gender doc is beat for beat. So, I thought this was the 50 real, I thought he was accusing you of lifting the 50 real difference between men and women, meaning like whatever the 50 are, and you list the 50. Nope. Um, but you don't. And so, I'm you, pulling it up he's on. A, yeah, yeah, and I'm pulling it up for everybody else. Print to, to control. Control. I'm just pulling up the video so that people yeah, can see. Yeah, do you see. want to watch that clip together? Especially if I'm wrong. Sorry, I'm wrong. talking about the, the 50 real differences. So I'm just showing in here, they have their sources listed uh, here. And, and you can literally see, th this is what he fucking copy and pasted. This is all, these are all the studies on brain sex science. He didn't even fucking read the studies. He literally just fucking copy and pasted this. I, they have like tons of them. They have more of sources with, listed here. And I took four of these lines because there were only four of them that actually influenced my doc in any way. And then, sorry. And on the chairman, wow. Doc, uh, it's listed all the way at the bottom, uh, right there. So these all right here are what were copied and pasted from that. Um, so this down here. And yeah, so. 
pretty much the whole fucking bibliography. He's like, just this part right here. <laughs> Please kill me. Yeah, there's only four of them. One, two, three, four. And I read Risen Dying, the Female Brain. I read ah! Dying, the male brain, My goon folder. I did not read these other two. They were just you didn't read any of that, that don't lie. They just had quotes in the book that influenced my doc. But yes, 100% of this is original. Just written by me. 100% of it's Actually. original. I'm, a, and, I'm uh, so sorry. Okay, fair enough. I'll take the L there. Um, do you mind if I ask but you, 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 know, one you realize like how insane that is to accuse me of plagiarism because I copied sources out of a YouTube hold description. On, hold on, hold on. Are you mad at me for t admitting being wrong? No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm trying to get a lot of people after they're like, oh, okay, never mind then. And then they move on. But the problem is, is that the reason people keep bringing these things up to me is because they feel like I'm being unfair to Beckett in the way that I'm describing these things. But then if, if it turned out that they were right, yes, they would want to like rake me over the coals for being unfair to Beckett. But now that it's pretty obvious, it is Beckett that was saying something insane that well, I feel like that should that also urge? be stated. Well, do you, well, so I can explain a bit why people have that urge, right? Now, do you see, when I was wrong about these references, I have to pull it up, we pulled it up, and I didn't even argue. I didn't even justify, I didn't explain. I said, you know what, I'm happy to take the L, even though we may be, you know, uh, arch nemesis is on, on the internet here. I'm not here to, you know, uh, die on a hill of being wrong, right? But it seems like <coughs> the things that where you're not exactly accurate, or you can find a, a discrepancy in the description of the problem, you will die on that hill, and that will make people feel incensed and want to fight well, you because you will so fight to the death, so they'll follow you there. Yeah, so that's something that we can talk about then. But I, but before that, like this is what I'm saying, is that where we can catch them massively misrepresenting something that. Well, no, like, I, I, mis I was wrong. He wasn't wrong because it sounds like so he. he he called it plagiarism. He, was, he called it plagiarism. What do you mean? Yeah, well, no, okay. He, so I don't know Beckett, but he's got beat up by Stardust. Let's give him a break. Right? <laughs> he's, he's not exactly... Um, I disavow. We know, love Stardust here. Any, either one of us. One's in chat if you love Stardust. Two's in chat if you're a traitorous asshole. <laughs> I agree on that. I, it doesn't matter to me at this point. My issue is that small little things that I will admit, like, yes, I, I did that like irresponsibly, probably shouldn't have done that, or I said this one in incorrectly, or yes, I was wrong there. Like, even when I do that, I'm still... I'm still attacked for that incessantly. Um, and then a bunch of other things where people just feel I'm lying, they will still attack me and call me a liar for those incessantly. But then when I show that people are being dishonest and are misrepresenting things over and over, everybody wants to make excuses for them like they got beat up by Stardust or some shit. I, I, I would I, like some I'm, consistency I'm in the way that people I, are being I can, treated. I can help you. Look, I, I actually, ironically, you know, those that we hate, we see the most of ourselves in. I was in sales for 12 years. A little bit of internet and developer shit now, but I was in sales forever. I know exactly what you're talking about, the enjoying line. I, I came from the same cloth, I feel like, right? The difference, though, is that when you talk about the linguist stuff, I'm not even going to bring it up, but what you said the other day was that, look at the nine times that I'm honest. Why do you guys keep looking at the one time I'm not? That's not and what I said. The, well, I'll, I'm paraphrasing, but I'll make my point and then you can disagree with it. Okay. But the one out of the nine, right, you, you said, look, at, I'm consistently saying this other thing. Don't you be, you know, doesn't that create a pattern that maybe when I say the thing, let's say I misspeak or let's say I'm being hyperbolic, that because of the other eight out of nine times that I'm saying it the proper way, why don't you look at those as evidence? for why I'm being, you know, not using it to throw it in people's faces or being that I'm, and the reason is, is that one, that the, the one spoiled apple spoils the bunch or whatever, because it makes <coughs> people question, okay, what were your motives in the past? And now I feel like, okay, if you lied to this one time, what's to say that you weren't lying about these other things? Because now they see you have the capacity. Now go, go ahead. This is, this is just fundamentally true. And if Tom disagrees with this take, which, shocker, he probably will. I don't remember, I, I was... I was busy this weekend, okay? So I like sped watch this, all right? Um, it's just fundamentally true that if you are caught lying about one thing, people are usually going to write off just about every single fucking thing that you say after the fact, even if you are being completely truthful. Like, I'm trying to think of an example. Who's somebody who's like, who's somebody who's like a big fat fucking, oh, Lav. Lav is a great example of that. I'm sure that there are times where Lav has told the truth. Nobody fucking believes her. Because you've like established this pattern of behavior. So even if you are being truthful, it's it's the boy who cried wolf. You know what I mean? It's like you can only say, oh, I misspoke so many fucking times before people understand that it's your baseline. Also, for somebody who claims like to be a professional fucking linguist, this guy sure chokes on his fucking words and misspeaks a lot. Um, I don't know. I would expect a linguist to have a, a better understanding of communicating concepts to other human beings through the lens of the scientific study of language. But that's just me. Vid maxing. Okay, so I assume we're talking <coughs> about the panel where I say something about papers and uh, and all of that, right? That's like a, me saying, like, yes, I, I was irresponsible there, shouldn't have said that, blah, 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 right? Um, we're saying that, like, well, me saying 
everybody's just focusing on that. But I told the truth all the other times, and I don't know why they don't focus on those things. That's that's what we're referencing when we say that, right? Well, yeah, yeah I think we're talking thirty thousand foot view, not a specific incident, but sure. Well, that but that's well, okay. But that's what like that is what I'm talking about. Is when I say this, I'm saying, hey, look, if there was a, uh, I've talked. To He's not cunning, and he it, Tom Tom is not fair. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the brave stance. Brought this a million times on stream, and so there is like a consistency a consistency of me talking about the like. Uh, me giving this to the professor and how proud I was of it at the time and like how happy I was that like I thought this was really cool that he wanted to use my stuff and shit about like uh and so this is he is so weaselly um in this part I remember this I remember this it's all coming back to me I'm I feel like I'm waking up from a dream I can see clearly now um so there's several things that he will point to in order to say that yes, this was used in universities and colleges, even though everybody knows that's a fucking lie. Um, the first one is that he says that he, when he was doing linguistic marketing, and when he was doing linguistic marketing, that means that he took a class um, from work. He can't recall what those classes were about. Um, he can't recall who provided those classes or if you know they were uh, from a third party company, if they were from work. He can't recall any details about the classes themselves. But nonetheless, he took these classes, okay? And in these classes, they taught him how to upsell pizzas, essentially. Um, and so his claim is that while he worked in linguistic marketing, there was a professor that like was somehow tangentially related to what he did when he was doing linguistic marketing. And that when he wrote this Google document, he showed this Google document to the professor. And his claim was that like the professor wanted him to like edit it and like spruce it up and like make it whatever. And he wanted to use it in his class. So those are his words that the professor wasn't like, oh my God, based, I'm going to use this in my class right now. He was like, this, this document is actually like kind of asked, can you like fix it up? It, and then maybe like I can do something with it. And the way that he tells it, it sounds like he was like begging this dude, like on his hands and fucking knees to like, please validate me, please send pie, please notice me. Um, the other two incidents of him, like that he'll point to to say, oh yeah, it was used in colleges and universities, um, was Will and his channel, who is like a fucking 500 sub YouTube account who made a documentary on Progressive Victory, saying that he wanted to use it at his university, but there was too much cussing in it and it was inappropriate. And so he couldn't do that. And then there was one more where it was like somebody in his chat said, oh, I gave this to my professor and they thought it was based. And that's his evidence. And if we know anything about being on the internet, you guys, is people will say shit. Yeah. So th those are the, those are the claims. There's, that's his, his proof, his evidence, his data that his, uh, document multiple because there were multiple drafts so he says documents were used in colleges and universities is because some fucking random asshole in his chat said it and then there was like maybe a hypothetical professor that we can't prove existed who was like oh wow this sucks but uh kind of cool i guess base good for him good for him you know my, my videos and then my my doc and all this shit and then other people in my chat coming and telling me that they went over there in their classes and like shit like that like all of these things happened on stream i built the doc on stream all of it is out in the open and so i am saying when i when i say this on that panel that like to everybody who's there it makes sense to them there's nobody in chat they show the clip here in a minute it does not make sense to everybody in that conversation specifically every single person as soon as tom was like yeah i've written papers about this everybody was like oh shit this guy's no this guy knows what he's talking about like the point of him bringing that up was to claim authority in that conversation and everybody bought it they weren't like skeptical of his claim they were like and he doubles down on it. They're going to show the clip, but what ends up happening is he's like, oh, I've worked in linguistics. I've done da-da-da-da-da. That's how I know that I'm right. And I've had videos and papers that have been used in universities. And one of the guys goes, oh, will you send me those papers? I'd love to read those if they were used in a university. And Tom goes, yeah, I'll send them to you. Instead of clarifying and correcting. Instead of being like, I'm sorry, I misspoke there actually for a second. Like, it's just one singular paper um, and I don't even really know if it was used in a university or not. It's just what somebody had told me. Instead of clarifying that, he doubles down and is like, yeah, I'll send them to you. So this is a fucking lie. Lie detected. I'm freaking out about this quote. There's nobody in chat upset that <laughs> I said this. I can fact check you. When you say that thing in that panel. There was no, course, no, no, there was no fact truthful. checking. And no, it had nothing to do with fact checking. The issue was that when, okay, so as I've said over and over, like when it comes to like whether or not I say I am a linguist, it was never that I was saying, uh, well, I'm not actually a linguist. That's why I don't say it. I never said that. What I said was I, I do behind the scenes call myself a linguist. But on stream, if I said that in this space where it is more academic, people would take that to mean that I had a degree and that I had some credentials aligned with this. And I don't want that to be the case. So when I communicate this, I try to be very responsible with how I can. Yeah, but on stream, he literally said he's a professional linguist. They'll play the clip. I'm being crazy. Based on the context that it's I'm being, being soy, sorry. That 
it, it, on that panel. There's this nothing untruthful is so about what stupid. it is that I'm saying. The, the this is difference is that the in the context specifics. that it's said in is uh, it makes sense because everybody there knows what it is that I'm talking about. But when it's clipped that way, it looks bad. And I said it in a way that normally I tried to make sure that I always gave the caveat so that it couldn't be clipped. Wait, so that it the, be the way you just said it, it sounded like you didn't do anything wrong based on what you just said. When I when I say I said it irresponsibly, I am not saying I lied or I was wrong in what I said. What I am saying is I said it in a way that could be misinterpreted. And that was my mistake. It is irresponsible in how I said it. That is what I've said over and over. So where okay. you repeat it back to me, and you say, oh, they look at the one time I admit I lied. I didn't say I lied there. I, I, I said that I, that I was definitely irresponsible. It, that is categorically a lie. If you say I have papers and videos that are used in universities and you know that that is not true and when somebody says oh that's actually really interesting can you send them to me instead of correcting that and saying oh fuck sorry like I actually misspoke if you're not correcting it in the moment you are intentionally lying because they're like let's be real I say dumb shit all the time I, I'm just a girl I just be saying shit you know what I mean and like if I say something and somebody like is like wait what did you just say like you did what now? And I'm like, hold on, pause. Like, actually, let me rephrase that. That's actually not what I meant. Like, I'll clarify in the moment if I misspeak or if I just like throw shit at the wall to see what sticks and somebody like catches it, of course, you're going to be like, actually, pause. You're right. Uh, that was my bad. I misspoke on that. This is actually what I meant. Um, it requires, it is, it requires intent for you to double down on that when somebody fucking calls you out on it. Like if somebody catches you in a lie and you're like, oh yeah, for sure. You're lying. You just doubled down on the lie. Like this can't be real. Responsible in how I said that because it could be misinterpreted. He's a professional yapper. So do you think any portion of people in the real world, because people in the real world are just like people online. Anytime you say that to someone in the real world, do you think they also misinterpret it? They yes. maybe don't see <laughs> you of being wrong about your credentials. There isn't a, there isn't like a cost in the real world where I am like, uh, I could be looked at. Do you see how fucking like Machiavellian this is? There's no cost in the real world for lying. There's no cost. This, this man is not safe to be on the streets. Lock him up. Like, there is a cost for lying. You're being dishonest. That, yes, lying, bad. We don't lie. Misrepresenting the truth, bad. Like... Hello? Can somebody please call the police for me? Hello? Barbie! Oh my god, Barbie gets an air horn. Hi! <laughs> Love you, queen. That as some sort of authority in a way where I am, uh, where I'm like, yes, misrepresenting myself. No, I don't think it matters. And I don't think that just as like, uh, somebody saying in the real world that they're a philosopher, if people thought that that meant that they had a degree in philosophy, well, it doesn't really matter when you're sitting at some like a uh, table with a bunch of friends just sitting there talking about what it is that you do. No, it doesn't. I mean, and so this is something that is interesting as well. I don't have the clip. Someone get the clip. You, Tom, Tom Tent lovers in chat. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Somebody get me this clip or I'm going to scream. Tom was talking to Not So Erudite, and he said that he is a compulsive liar. I was like a compulsive liar, for, for sure. Like, literally, would just do it without thinking. And everybody's like, oh, well, he's talking about, like, in the context of addiction. And it's like, addiction is behavioral. So there are residual side effects of addiction uh, that follow you throughout your life that you have to work hard to curtail. Um, so... Like, this dude has straight up, like, said with his whole fucking chest, yeah, I fucking lie all the time. And people are like, no, Tom is fair. And it's like, are you guys schizophrenic? What are you talking about? Are you having a conversation with someone that's, is Tom is fair? Is he in the room right now? It's fucking crazy, dude. It doesn't matter as much. But if you're on stream and Love you, you talk about philosophy a lot and you keep calling yourself a philosopher without clarifying or do what President Sunday does where you keep calling yourself a political scientist over and over without any caveat, without anything added to it, then yes, that would be a problem. But what I'm saying is where you guys are trying to make it look like I'm trying to- Okay, again, a linguist necessitates like some kind of higher education, I would say. You can have people that are political scientists who are like career politicians that have never gotten a degree in their fucking life. Like- they are different things. Like, I just want to die. I just, please, Tom isn't fair.
to misrepresent myself so that I look like an authority? I'm saying, well, there's a pattern of behavior with my audience where I'm saying over and over, I'm not an authority. The thing is, is like when you're with your audience, like that's one thing. But when you step into different arenas, you have to clarify because not everybody knows your lore. And I learned this the hard way. When I had my debate with Calvin Guerra and I made a joke about me being a tanky um, and everybody hated that. <laughs> and I was like, I, I forget often that uh, a lot of people are not familiar with my sense of humor. Um, and so that was just not an interesting time at all. Um, and it's even the same thing in real life. Like when I meet new people, new people don't know Malcolm Lore. They don't know my sense of humor. They don't know that like this is the way that I talk. They don't know that I'm seriously like not being a shithead and that I'm just kidding. Like, yes, if you are going to use your credentials, quote unquote credentials, I use that very loosely. When you're trying to use your Pizza Hut experience to like claim authority on shit or whatever, you do actually have to clarify all the fucking time. Because there are people that are not caught up on your lore. And there's a difference between like, you know, I'm not going to clarify every single time that I'm fucking joking for you guys. Even if there's people that are here that don't know me and aren't familiar with me, I'm not going to do that because like, I don't care. You know what I mean? So you have to pick one or the other. I Barbie and I actually talked about this literally just the other day where it's like you can be like this edgelord, asshole, compulsive liar, fuck boy. You can be that person. You just have to be ready to deal with the consequences of being perceived as that person. So when people are like, dude, you're being kind of like a sex pest and you're like, yeah, what about it? That's just kind of how I am. You have to be willing to eat that and take that and live with that. If that's how you want to conduct yourself, you can't like cry and shit and piss and come that nobody's caught up on all 17 seasons of the Tom Goonery lore because you lied about your fucking credentials for the 57th fucking time out of context. Okay, you have to be prepared to eat that not everybody is caught up on your fucking lore every single time. You know what I mean? And there's nothing wrong with just with straight up just being like, oh, yeah, by the way, I don't have like so if I was in a conversation and I my expertise was selling pizzas and somebody was like, oh my God, like you're a linguist. And I'd say, oh yeah, when I say I'm a linguist, I mean like I, I worked at, at like Pizza Hut and I sold pizzas and shit like that. That's what I mean. Like I don't have an education. It takes like two seconds to clarify that. If you're actually super butthurt and twisted and fucking crying about how your reputation that is ruined, that you ruined by the way, you did that yourself. Nobody did that to you. Um, like, you just have to be able to eat it. You have to be able to eat that and live with it. That's a choice of your own behavior, okay? You don't get to have it both ways, okay? Mm -mm -mm. Tisk, tisk, tisk. I'm not uh, an expert. I don't have a degree. I only work this job, but I didn't. Uh, but I, I didn't uh, go get like credentials or certifications or anything for it. That like um, he said in his conference. I'm gonna pause any of this every single fucking time. I'm so sorry, you guys. It's gonna take us forever to get through the segment. Um, no, he did actually say. Go. Let's listen to that one more time work this job but i didn't uh but i, I didn't uh, go get like credentials or certifications or anything he said in his conversation with beckett he was talking to beckett and somebody else i don't remember who the other person was he said specifically that he did actually get credentialed because his job sent him to go and take fucking linguistics classes that he couldn't remember what they were about or what they did or what they learned or who the fuck organized it or how much it cost or where it was located but he has claimed that he is credentialed this guy's just such a fucking liar and then I started going to school for uh, what was called linguistic marketing thing for it that like the the audience is not being misled by these things. They know what it is that's actually happening. I am being truthful with them. Um, and so when I say it on that True panel, couch, they know what it is that I'm saying. Everybody no, understands well, it. nobody knew what the fuck you were saying. That's why every single person on that panel was like, oh, a linguist. I can't wait to read his fucking expose doctoral thesis on fucking gender. Everyone was confused, Tom. You're fucking delusional. You're a language is use person, right? A what? Language is use. Language is use is what you're saying? Wittgenstein, yes. Yeah, sure. Like, we're, yeah. If you guys are lucky, you'll see me in the chat because I was swaying out in the chat. I, you, like, in your own words, do you know what that means? Can you explain I, what I'm talking about? I, 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 I'm assuming... Uh, 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 language. If we're talking about mm -hmm. Wittgenstein. So, maybe. Uh, so, when they... I've heard you say this, so I know you know what I'm talking about, but I don't think it's pragmatics. But um, when it's not pragmatics, word, by the word, say blarg, we all remember the Agua conversation. We all start saying blarg, right? And it means, mm -hmm. I don't know, Yu-Gi-Oh card. Well, if everyone says it, it becomes Yu-Gi-Oh card is now Blark. They mean the same thing because if we all start using it, or if somebody has a nickname, well, that person's name becomes that nickname. It, there's no difference, right? And I, I subscribe to that as well. I know you do too. So if everyone around you thinks when you're in their space or the space and you say, I'm a linguist or linguist by trade, they see in their head college. 
then wait, they're no, not the, wrong. Wait, 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 hold on. Uh, literally, the word by trade means that you did not get a degree and that, that instead you worked yourself into this position or worked your... No, by trade usually implies that you go to trade school. There is an education aspect there. Like you either take an apprenticeship or you go to trade school. Tom did neither of these things. Um, I just don't understand like why he does not know how this works. If somebody says that I'm a, a linguist by trade, I assume that they know a second language and that they do consulting. But because Tom has never worked in linguistics, he doesn't know that that's like colloquially how it's referred. Is like, if you are a linguist by trade, you are somebody who speaks multiple languages and you're a consultant. That's usually what that means. Yes, and by trade also implies experience or it's some kind of education. It doesn't have to be formal education, but there is some kind of education implied with a trade school. Isn't it usually both though? Um, technically, yes, because if you're going to trade school, you're doing an apprenticeship, you're getting the experience, right? It's not like you if you go to, uh, if you do an apprenticeship to be a welder, it's not like you just watch somebody weld for a year and then they're like, okay, have uh, good luck, have fun. Like obviously you're getting experience while you're doing it, but it necessitates like some kind of education in relation to whatever you're talking about. And in linguistics specifically, a linguist by trade is usually somebody who does consulting work. And somebody who does consulting work is usually somebody who is bilingual or somebody who's an interpreter of some kind. That's what that directly implies. But Tom wouldn't know that because Tom has never fucking worked in linguistics. ...yourself into this title. That's what the word by trade means. Well, hold on. You never used the by trade until you spoke to the posh Brit. Correct. Right? Which he did the same job as me. This is... Had, and he ah! had I forgot this fucking lore. I forgot this fucking lore. There was a guy that was on the Crucible and he debated Big Papa Fascist and he said that he was a linguist by trade. But this guy, I think, I think this guy was a polygot. I think this guy spoke multiple languages. And so he called himself a linguist by trade. And I... No, it was either he was a polygot or he spoke like a dead language and he could translate like old books or something like that. It was one of the two. But it was something to do with him like either knowing like dead languages or he knew multiple languages and so he said i'm a linguist by trade and then tom like immediately copy and pasted that uh, uh, it's all coming back to me it's all coming back to me yes 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 oh he didn't have a degree he had the same job as me and called himself a linguist by trade for that reason he didn't work in marketing he didn't yeah he didn't have the same job uh, tom worked in marketing and linguistic marketing is also called analytic marketing and again tom would know that if he actually worked in fucking linguistics like a, a single day in his fucking life is typically referred to as analytic marketing and it's not in the same capacity as somebody who is a linguist they're doing like uh they're looking at like uh phrases and words and how they trend and like uh how people respond to like stimuli regarding language where like if they say you know, more people are willing to buy this product if you describe it in this way or if you use this kind of advertisement or whatever. Um, that's that's like a, a step, that's like seven steps up from what Tom was doing. Tom was writing fucking scripts for cold calling. So no, actually, totally different, totally different, totally different. Uh, he I'm sorry for scaring your cat. No, he worked in linguistic marketing. It is not technically marketing. Linguistic marketing is a... Uh... Look, I, I'm just going to be frank with you. I know what you're talking about when you're talking about linguistic marketing, right? When you're in sales, right, and you write scripts for the team to make cold calls, right? They call it sales, the sales uh, uh, lab, right? Or the science, the sales, sales division, right? Or the sales we're, we're, division. We're talking about, you know, the marketing executive, right? Here's a really good example, you guys. This is a really good example. Um, a lot of times, if you are familiar at all with this, in a lot of um, inpatient settings, um, like inpatient psych, like, inpatient rehab programs, anything like that, you have people that are basically like the bitch of the floor, okay? That's the person that gets the snacks, that's the person, you know, that makes phone calls, that's the person that does laundry and cleans up and, you know, puts on the group movie and shit like that. Uh, it's usually like the unit bitch, okay? Those people are usually either called, uh, they're either called techs or they're called um, caregivers. And that's a, that's a way to fluff up your resume, right? When all you really do is turn the TV on and off at the retirement home or whatever, wherever the fuck you work, right? But your title is a caregiver. Um, this is an example of this kind of like fucking padding of language where it's like, maybe your job gave you like a really fucking fancy title to make you feel important and cool. Um, but realistically, you were just, you know, teaching people how to do cold calls for fucking Pizza Hut. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
when all you do when I did all I did was pick up the phone to sell SEO and websites, right? Yes, the title can say a lot, but it really doesn't mean anything. Subway calls themselves sandwich artists. So what? Yeah, sure. That's a good example. There you go. Sure. But there but the point is is that like at the time, so the again, this is like a very niche field. It, the names of for it have changed a ton of times. The, it's not a niche uh, field. No, no, no it's not a niche field. It is not a niche field. No, no, it's one to one. It's no, it's it's literally not a niche field. Like the idea of using like buzzwords in order to generate more revenue is not a new field at all. No, it's not. Tom also thinks that his company, the one that he worked for that taught him how to do fucking pizza hut calls or whatever the fuck, that the company that he worked for invented and pioneered linguistic marketing. Like this dude is actually delusional, like at a critical level where like I'm concerned for him. Who unique is one, right? Because it's, there's no other department like that department at that mortgage company. And by the way, for, for, to, to the mortgage company, I, uh, the mortgage company again was like doing one thing. That is not what we continue doing. He also worked for a mortgage company and he called it a law office. Like there's so much of this shit by tempo. There's so much of this shit that I, I literally cannot fill you guys in on it. And the thing is, is that Tom is a little, a weaselly little liar dude. So if you don't have the fucking clip ready, he's going to be like, oh, you're just making shit up. You're fucking lying. Oh, because you don't have like the 97th fucking clip of him lying, you know, on fucking hand. Um, but he had said that he worked for a law firm. He said a law firm. He called people to prorate their mortgages to get them to take out loans that they couldn't pay back so the company would make more money. That's not a fucking law firm, you fucking idiot. Oh my God. The, yeah, food services. The, the, so one was legal and then two were uh, like franchise companies that owned a bunch of different restaurants. One was legal? Yes, that's where I like I initially... Uh, went to classes and learned all of this. It wasn't, sorry, my job was not legal. Sorry, the company was legal. My job was not legal. My job was- Do you mean uh, it was in the legal profession? Like it was a law firm or something? Yes, it was a law firm that had people uh, calling a, and talking to people about uh, mortgages and shit like that. It was- uh, And this law firm employed a linguistic marketer doing after that when i'm setting up departments with new companies and new uh corporations that, that we are not doing the same exact thing that was initially done there well, then, what, uh, so <clears throat> linguistic marketing yes that like i again i've said over and over i don't even know what they called it back then but this is just what the, <coughs> like the name of the trade was at the time when we did this and the like but well, if you're it, setting I don't up the department you're defining the word moving forward right correct which is which is part of the issue is that like the there are other people who do these things and that there are other companies who do these things and they hire linguists for these things. And that is what we were doing was hiring linguists and also, uh, but yes, it was like some of it was- Or the people who are trained in persuasion, not linguists. Linguists study the history of language. Okay, when I say we hired linguists, I mean like a lot of them had degrees in linguistics, okay? But as, as I said, like generally online- He doesn't even know the ways that people like describe their title within the job that he claims to have had. Like, please put me down guys, please euthanize me. Fine, if I say linguist, I'm talking about somebody with a degree in that area. Um, so we were hiring people with degrees in linguistics and that we were specifically focusing on just language for a ton of different things. Some of it was just marketing. Some of it was uh, team building. Some of it was for uh, ads and like sales. Some, but there were like a million different reasons for why we were doing these things. And our focus was on on language like it was focused on pragmatics and that was the field that we studied for other reasons but just because it's for other reasons and for other uses it doesn't change the fact that it is the study of language through a science i'm probably going to shave my head here soon so maybe i will scientific process it doesn't change that and this is the part that like keeps the keeps getting confused for people is that like the the utility of what it is you're doing doesn't change what you're doing yeah so so there's a, there's an analogy I'm he just like this, this entire word problem, soups right? is when you talked about when it was COVID and you would give people a quote unquote discount, screw the people who say that's fraud, they're fucking retarded, right? But we'll just to explain, it, but yeah. right, it is the, during COVID, people got, you know, backed up and everyone wanted delivery. So you would tell people when they wanted to, whatever, they had a problem with it being late, you'd offer them a quote unquote discount to come pick it up. Mm -hmm. But really you were waiving the delivery fee. And maybe you already had is let's say GM, you had like five to 10% you could waive. But, you know, maybe in certain cases, if they found out if there was, you know, uh, hey, this seems weird, you'd <laughs> give them a disc, you know, real discount or you'd include it. But either way, is, is that a fair summary, right? Of, of yes, that questions. is a fair summary of what I said. But again, like I'm giving an example an of one just, small I, thing, I, but I just want to make I, sure because people keep misrepresenting that, that like, that that was like everything that we did was kind of the same as that. And it, it's just not, but yeah, go ahead. That's right. Yeah, like I said, I think that was a fair summary towards your right towards your yes. side, right? But the the analogy is is that that is totally fine to do when the end of the transaction with that customer, they walk out the door. I was a very transactional salesperson for the same reasons. But yeah, so I actually I I have a friend who he has a PhD in computer science with an emphasis on natural language processing, and he's currently looking looking for uh, a, uh, another PhD program in um, uh, like computational linguistics.
uh, and he also like reads a lot about linguistics because it, it's, it's a film that he wants to go into and he'll he'll watch tom talk and then he'll like it, and then he'll like come to be and talk about like all these like little tiny things where he's just like fucking it up entirely like like he like for example he said that like uh like 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 wittgenstein um like dealed in pragmatics because pragmatics is about like how like words are used in context and wittgenstein, wittgenstein said like language is uh like like language is use or whatever and or, like meaning is use and like these are things that like have similar keywords and their Wikipedia descriptions, but have like literally fucking nothing to do with each other. They're, they're just like totally disparate fields, and he doesn't know like 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 the difference. Or like he called like uh like DXS or whatever uh, DXS. Um, like like he he said that it's about like how language deals with context, and no, it doesn't. Like DXS refers to like temporal and spatial relations in language. It's like it's it. it it's like he has like not even like the first fucking idea of what any of these things are and and because because this, this friend of mine has like like educate background in linguistics he's taken like linguistics courses he has a degree in like natural language processing um it's like it's like he, he can like pinpoint all like the stupid shit that he says and it's very fr- he, it drives him fucking <laughs> wild it drives him up the fucking wall if i can get tom to talk to your friend will your friend do it <laughs> I would need to ask him. He might be open to it. Because I would say, Tom, I have a real professional linguist that will actually fucking debate you on why you're wrong on everything and you're a total fucking liar. I know that I sexually harass Mantis. I apologize, but I'll moderate and I'll be fair. Because Tom why is fair. Like? More of a uh, than Tom. Did you know that Tom says that, uh, did you know that Tom says that, like, translators for the CIA are linguists? Sure. Okay. Yes. And my left eye is busted. No, that's not. I wear glasses. My left eye is I, it's completely like, intact. No, no, and and the the reason he thinks that is because on the Wikipedia page for linguistics, at the bottom paragraph of like the intro section, it says that like relate. It says that like translation is like a related field to linguistics. And but like but what he does, what he fails to understand is that like the act of being a translator, it's like it's like you're fluent in two languages, you're translating between them. Whereas like translation in linguistics, it's a lot more like abstract. Like it's about like sort of like. It's about sort of like the the sort of like concept the conceptual act of like how you how meaning transfers between languages. It's like it's like these are like two very like it, it, it it's it's like it's like it's like calling like like it, it's like calling it an, an electrician a physicist. Um, it, it's, it's, well, it's and like, I, there is you like, can if. Like, if he wanted to say that they were linguists by trade, I would completely agree with that because, like, they're consulting. They're like a linguist consultant, essentially. Like, that's usually like, what translators are referred to, but he would know that if he actually fucking worked in linguistics. I think the main problem... Well, like, I, like, like, it, oh, go ahead. You wouldn't even call them, like, a linguist by trade because it's, like, it's, like... Like linguistics is an academic field. He also doesn't know that like that linguistics is a field of study. He thinks it's he thinks it's a philosophy. Like 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 he thinks that all of linguistics is like exclusively like like the philosophy of language, which just isn't true. But it's like it, it's like it's like I don't know. It's like it's like 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 I would say that saying that a translator is a linguist by trade is like saying that an electrician is a physicist by trade. It's like well, it's what like, people want to use when they. Concepts, but, it's like if you want to pat up your resume. Like you would say that, or like yeah, I if, guess you would say that, That's or like if, though. or like if somebody wanted to, or if like you were at a party or something and you have like a complicated job title, like I'm a CIA like interpreter or whatever the fuck, you could just say yeah, I like do linguistics by trade because you're like consulting. It's just like an easier. It's either like a, a quick, easy way to like say it, and this is gonna be so soy of me, but like in the same way, like some people just say queer because it's like a catch-all term and they don't want to like get into the nitty gritty or like whatever the fuck. Or it can be used as like a patter where you're like, oh, I want to buff up my resume so i'm gonna say that oh i'm a linguist a linguist by trade because i do like linguistic consulting dude that's not no that's the stupidest shit i've ever heard i learned languages to become a polyglot because i wanted to understand my gay ass soap operas in other countries and fuck the english subtitles i would not call myself a linguist i would call myself you have too much free time there is a difference well, and even if you were, like, you have more of a claim to that than Tom does, to be completely honest. But also, you could just say, like, oh, I'm a polygot, and that would be, like, contextually relevant. It's not that you, like, studied every single one of these languages, but, like, if you have basic competency in the language, you could easily claim, like, being a polygot. Uh, there's too many poly words anymore. Polycule, polyglot, polypocket, poly... What are we doing? What are we doing? Just make it all one term. Poly like, people. 
poly. Poly idiot. He's a poly idiot. Okay, based. No, I I just want to I want to watch the Tom video. I would like to finish it. <laughs> okay, tell Barbie we say hi when she gets her bye hooker. Love you. Bye. Bye. Later, Gators. Oh, good heavens. Okay, Steve is with me right now. Has literally two parents who are translators for the federal government during the Cold War, and he wouldn't even say that they were linguists. No, I yeah, it's a weird way of saying it. All right, let us continue. When that customer walks out the door, you never see them again. Right? Maybe they'll come in at a different time of day, or it's going to be so far from now, they, have, they don't know you, right? So you don't, you're not going to take the consequences for that action, right? Because you kind of bend, you're bending a little bit of the truth. It's not necessarily a lie, but you are bending a bit, because you could just say, hey, um, you could say, hey, come pick it up, um, and uh, it'll be ready quicker. And you It would be considered a lie by omission, like if we were adding like, right. some sort of ethical okay, value enough. to it. Yeah, it would be a lie by omission. Okay. Right. So it's a lie by omission, right? And the same thing goes, but the challenge is, is that you've got people coming back to your stream, right, who are seeing things like in, in a couple conversations, they see where you do leave things out. Or when you review these, these conversations, sometimes you go back into your salesperson role where you are kind of buffing some of the facts. Uh, that's not a bad thing. Oh, it's Ryle Kittenhouse. Let's go, bro. Thanks for the sub. Um, excellent job uh, stomping the fuck out of Tom. This guy's a fucking idiot. You could have gone way harder. I like that you, got, you went harder later on, but... Um, A plus plus, bud. A plus plus. But when you are going and retelling these stories, people want to see that if you've done a wrong, the way somebody knows that you understand it was wrong is that you don't retell the story in the best light for yourself. You say, yeah, hey, look, mm -hmm. you know, this happened, whatever, whatever. But sometimes it seems like when you retell the thing, from my perspective, because I saw myself doing this before, is you tell it in a way where everyone starts going, God, it really feels like he just redacted all of the facts that were kind of important to why he was wrong there. Right. Well, so like what though? Because I, I the, so just now the, that is my issue this, over and over. Instead of saying yeah, when I was pest, you know, when I was asking Sulfur to take her top off, right? Mm -hmm. Instead, when you told it back to me just now on this call, you said Sulfur the thing with the boobs. Well, that kind of leaves out the important part about the, asking her to take her top off, right? Because that's kind of the important part. Wait. All right, hold on. Are, are you talking about where I was comparing what I'm saying to to Darius in Zerka? No. So what I'm saying is, is that. Well, just to be clear, because when I did say that, I did say, uh, when, when I did talk about that and I did reference it, I did say, I like, in that conversation that I did ask her to take her shirt off. So it wasn't like this was something that I was avoiding across the board. I did reference that throughout well, this conversation. Example, it's I true, think, he did. I think I gave a, a prime. And not that, the, not that sexual harassment is ever okay, but Sulphur's a fucking lesbian. Like, there, he didn't even have a shot. You know what I mean? Like, there, there wasn't even, like, a chance that he could riz her hard enough or whatever the fuck. Like, it just wouldn't happen. Example where you left out. Right, something, and it was a lie by condition. <laughs> now I quickly correct it, because it was the first time it was brought up in the conversation, and sulfur was brought up regarding the incident, and you said the thing with the sulfur and the boobs. Well, obviously that kind of omits the part where you did the wrong, because sulfur with the boobs isn't. This is just so fucking true, because like if you're sweeping for yourself, you're gonna like downplay super hard. It's like yeah, like I guess I could have said that better, and they're like, no, Malcolm, you lied about being on D-Day and, and, you know, storming Normandy. You lied about that. And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, like, I guess I misspoke. And it's like, you're just like weaseling around because you won't just, you know that it sounds bad for you to say it out loud. So you like couch your language. This is so true. The problem, she's just a girl with boobs. The problem was you asked her to take her top off three times. Now it could be a joke. I'm not saying that, right? Whatever no, your, I understand whatever what you're saying. Are. I understand what you're saying. I, but I, my point is that like, I don't, first off, I don't even remember actually saying that, but the, it, when, I know that when I referenced it, uh, I wasn't, we, we weren't even talking about that. We were talking about what it was that I said in DMs. And so, yes. You do not remember when, the, com the part when we talked about He did about send that, her the rape list, that's true. Because I remember the one other time that I referenced this outside of when we were talking about Zerka and Darius and the, and we referenced it just to say that was the day that I was saying these things in DMs. You're like, this is part of my problem is that lots of times when I'm talking about something that is irrelevant, I guess I'm not going to go through every single fucking detail. It has nothing to do with how it makes me look. Me even saying the thing with the boobs, it's not like, it's not the, I, I could have made it sound way better. I didn't even said, like, say Oh, the words. Halloween stream or anything like that. No, but the, you're saying that I'm, I'm purposefully leaving things out as though I'm trying to like omit things to make it sound better. And I'm but saying- But you don't disagree I, that you do this because you did it for your job. Oh yeah. So, uh, Mr. Mollusk, I'm sorry. Allow me to fill you in. Um, so Tom made a list and it was his rape list. And the rape list was uh, girls that Tom wanted to have sex with that probably wouldn't want to have sex with him. And it included Sulphur. It included, uh, I think Pamela Anderson was on there. Um, and then on the list, it also said every girl that Destiny has ever fucked. Like, and he called it the rape list. And then obviously when it leaked that he possessed the rape list, he was like, I don't, I don't even know 
what what is that? And they're like, it's a list with names on it. And he's like, oh, I think I was just like writing down girls that I thought were cute or something. I don't know. But he he did refer to it as the rape list. So, so it's not like I'm. No, that, you cannot say pretend. that I did this for a job and now I do it on stream. That is not the same thing. You, um, all you, I'm saying is you left. You you don't. You can't act. Like you've never done this thing, and you're bewildered that you. I'm not ever acting do this like thing. I never do this thing. I'm saying that you are not giving oh, honest examples when you bring that up. That Soy you, are, rage. you are twisting it in a way. Well, you that said you don't remember, accurate. so you have to concede that it could I'm, have happened because you don't okay, remember. Yes, it could have happened. I'm saying the only other time that I remember saying this or referencing that whatsoever was when we were talking about the DMs that her and I had. So it's not even relevant, uh, the, because that's not what we're going over at the time. We are talking about her leaking those DMs. So you do remember? I, as I just said, I can repeat this for the third time. I, the oh, only time I remember so referencing mad. that event outside of the Zerka and Darius part of the conversation is when we were talking about the DMs where it would have been irrelevant to that part. So you acting like that's what we're talking about and that I am having a conversation about that, but I am omitting details to make it sound better when in reality, it wasn't even like a relevant fact. What what I said on that panel was not a relevant those fact. Are, those aren't mutually exclusive. They can be both be an irrelevant fact and you could have left it out and it just so ha it could be that it just so happened to be the important fact and i was wrong that's totally true but it doesn't mean i'm being malicious by bringing it up no I'm not, just say, I'm not it's not about whether or not you're being malicious it's about the fact that one way or the other when i'm talking about things over and over they are being twisted to <coughs> say he's leaving things out or he changed the story because he left parts out here when they are very different contexts where the where i'm talking about you, something you do agree and so of course i'm going to leave things out there you do you, you, if, yes, if it's not you relevant, a, you I am not well, referencing hold on, hold on. it, but you're He's saying such that, a that fucking I'm trying yapper. to downplay it, and then I'm lying you, you by omission. You that you both have the sales brain. No, 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 you can't say that. Because you do it, I have the sales brain too. You, we all I know how I to talk I, I know, I already disagree with this, I'm telling you, I don't do this just because I'm on stream. What was the thing about the delivery fee? You did it with the delivery fee. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying you've done you're doing you it again. You're taking a, you're two different, different contexts that are totally irrelevant phones. to one another. It's and this is because Tom doesn't have like any like social skills other than like jerking off to pictures that girls send him in Discord. Um and he hasn't had like a real face to face communication with like another human being for a long time. Um you will subconsciously pick up behaviors and stuff if you're in an environment for long enough. And this is just factually true. Um, you see this a lot with people that have family members who are autistic or work with people who are autistic, um, and they adopt a lot of those traits um, pretty subconsciously. It's not like they're like, I'm going to act autistic today. Like they, they adopt a lot of like the behavioral patterns, the speech patterns. You can see this as well. Like if you've been friends with somebody for a while, you kind of pick up their vernacular. You catch yourself like saying things that they say a lot. Um, and that's like a subconscious part of your brain that you don't really just like turn off so the argument very clearly and tom's he's i would say that he's playing dumb but i actually think he's just this stupid the argument is that you worked in this field where you're constantly trying to upsell you're constantly trying to frame things in the best way possible to kind of get the or the outcome that you want um in the context of sales essentially you're trying to like you know fluff it up so people will spend a little bit extra money or more money than they normally would um, that you're used to kind of upselling stories you're in the in the the field of being a master linguist that's able to like bamboozle people out of their fucking money at the drop of a hat that behavior you do subconsciously and what Ryle is doing is he's saying hey I'm saying that this is something that you did for a long time by your own admission and I see you doing that now where you're saying you're leaving out important details and you're trying to frame yourself in the best light possible to dodge accountability or really like call into question or bring attention to what is actually being criticized. It isn't just that it was like a cringe booby stream. It was the fact that you asked Sulfur like five fucking times to take her top off and it was very obviously uncomfortable for her. Like, I, again, I would say he's playing dumb, but I actually think that he's just this fucking stupid because it, it's just undeniably true. If you're in an environment long enough or if you do something for long enough, it's second nature for you to do it. You can do it in your sleep. You can ask anybody who's at a job for more than, you know, a year. You just kind of do it. You don't even really know that you're doing it. I don't know what to say. You're not a different person. You're the same Tom when you're at whatever sales job or marketing job. You're not a different person. You might put your inflection and hi, my name is Sam and I'm with Linguistic Marketing LLC. Can I help you? Like, just because you put a different inflection doesn't mean you're a different person. You're still, it doesn't you're still matter Tom. what you're saying. Doesn't make sense. It's like me saying like, oh, you work at Taco Bell. Make sense. So I know, I know that you what make, make sense? I, I'm explaining right now. It's as though, like I say like, oh, you work at Taco Bell and I know you make tacos there. So therefore you make tacos on stream. You're like, well, no, it's like. Ryle, this is where you could have got him really good because you're not, you're not calling to attention that he's performing a task. You're calling to attention that he's emulating a set of behaviors. If you're somebody who works uh, as like a therapist, 
a lot of that is going to bleed into your interpersonal relationships. That part of you is going to be kind of like turned on um, for your interactions outside of work. Um, same thing if you're uh, like an attorney. A lot of that behavior is going to carry over. It's not like an act. It's not like I build houses. Therefore, in my sleep, I build houses. And, you know, when I'm having conversations with people, I'm building houses. It's like a behavioral pattern. Or like if you work in sales, if you work in law, if you work in healthcare, like there's a lot of behaviors and the ways that you talk and the way that you behave and the way that you kind of like process and filter information that doesn't just turn off because you're not at work. That would have been a better counter because it's not about like, oh, I'm just like cooking tacos on stream. It's that you're doing your customer service Taco Bell voice at home. That would be a better example. Specific to my job. <laughs> That's why I'm making tacos at Taco Bell. Different. It's not my personality. You're, you're just when making you're shit up using now. It's not my personality. On the phones. You're literally talking about, you said, when we're talking about rhetoric and linguistic marketing, it's literally how you describe it is using language in a way to influence people. Yes, yeah, so I need you to engage with what I'm saying. When I am directly work, engaging. You just said no, 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 the Taco no, no. Bell I, I, thing, and I'm yes. disagreeing with your analogy. Because okay, your what was the point of the Taco Bell thing then? Because I don't feel like you're engaging with it at all. What was the point of the Taco Bell analogy? You said that if I make Taco Bell at Taco Bell, then it doesn't make sense to say that I make Taco Bell at home or on stream. And what Correct. I'm saying is that because when you're on the phones or you're doing any sort of sales or customer engagement or writing scripts or whatever the case is, right, all the things that you've mentioned you've done, you're doing those things. You're not leaving your personality at home. You're still Tom when you're writing Why scripts are you saying and it's when my you're talking on the phones. Because you integrate like your vocational skills into your personality. It's usually why like therapists are usually, heavy quotes usually, really good empathetic listeners and friends interpersonally because they do it professionally. Usually the reason that people who work in law are a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more eager to be a Karen, right? Like this is just like, he's just so stupid. <laughs> He's like, it's like if you, if an alien landed on Earth and you locked them in like a fucking airtight capsule and asked them to explain human interactions, this is like the, this is like the answer that you would fucking get. Because it's like the only way that you can be this stupid is if you've literally never interacted with anybody in a professional capacity ever, or, the, or your only jobs have been literally working at, like, fucking Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. Like, no shit. Like, this is so fucking stupid, dude. Oh, my God. Would you still call me a linguist if I was a worm? Yes. You're a linguist in my heart. I, I believe that you're a linguist, Mr. Mollusk. Um, I'm still just dumbfounded about the gender doc. Uh, yeah, me too. Jump on board. I'm right there with you, bud. I didn't hear your question. Why are you saying it's my personality? Where is that coming from? You're, you're just saying that. Are you're you stating? Are you able to remove your personality? Why? Answer the question. Why are you saying it's my personality? You just keep adding that because in. Because you're... Are you... Yeah, that, that's... You're, when you're talking to a customer, you use your personality. What do you mean? That is the most broad answer possible. When you have training yes, to do something specific... Yes, personalities are broad. They're always attached to you. That's my point, Tom. When you have yeah. training to do something specific and you are doing it in specific contexts, that does not mean that you are using that training. It bleeds out into other contexts though. And somebody that has a history of addiction should know this, that even in the absence of like a chemical dependency, if you're no longer addicted to said substance, a lot of the behavioral patterns still exist. And those are things that need to be corrected with therapy. That's why things like Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous aren't really effective. They're really effective when they're paired with other things that help you decouple that behavior with the addiction. It's the same way, like, you can use a bajillion different fucking examples for this. One of them is going to be smoking cigarettes. Um, I smoke in the car. And I smoke a lot in the car. If I'm driving for an hour, I'll smoke probably like three or four cigarettes, like no joke. Why? Because it's behavioral. It's not that I'm like getting high off of the nicotine. It's not that I'm getting like a head rush every single fucking time that I smoke. It's behavioral. And every time that I've quit smoking and I've quit smoking more times than I can fucking count, I always start smoking again, but I have. It's behavioral. Even if I am no longer like physically under, you know, the... The influence of nicotine, I don't have any nicotine in my system, I still have that behavioral addiction. That's what makes quitting smoking really hard um, comparatively to like other addictions because even when you're smoking cigarettes, you're not getting a physiological effect. Um, you're not like getting high from smoking cigarettes. It's just habitual. It's a habit. Um, and again, Tom is uh, supposedly a recovering addict. Um, he should be very acutely aware that behavioral patterns breach far beyond the context in which they exist. Is Kamala Harris once so greatly said, you exist in the context of all that came before you. You didn't just fall out of a coconut tree, okay? Wise words from a wise woman. Um, Tom is too pea brain to understand um, 
that context dependent uh, doesn't really exist if we're talking about behaviors in a sociological sense that bleed out when you do something professionally. But again, I'm giving him too much credit. He's so stupid. Anything to do it in all contexts ever. That is that. insane. Perfect. You are. No, you said that it's part of my personality. Did I, say, did I say you always do or that it may slip sometimes and you fall into it? You didn't say either one of those things. You said it was part of my personality. He actually said yes, the latter. One. You the have that ability to do something without thinking about it. Now, you may have to, had to sharpen it. Yeah, well, sure, that's possible. I firmly believe that, that there, are no, there are no things become part of my I don't, believe, I don't believe in God, but there is a sales IQ. You either have it or you don't. You can sharpen it to be better, right? But I've watched a thousand people walk into a sales floor, and either I could call it one for one. If they came in, they had it, they were going to go through. They made the sale in the first month, and they were going to be good. They didn't. They were fucked. They were going to hate it. It's a thing with your personality. Now, you turn yes. it off and turn it on. Right. And what I'm saying is, is that you may turn it on for work or turn it off or whatever it is. Right. And that's fine. And that's different than streaming. I'm not you do it all the time. And I'm saying it is possible that when in a scenario where somebody is trying to rebuttal you or ask you something or hold you to account, whatever the case is, it is within the reasonable set of possibilities that that personality or that part of you that yes. rebuts things and kind of what I mean, call it a white lie, call it leave some things out, whatever it is, yes. because you want to obviously we all do this. Well, I want to look best in the argument. I will Sometimes agree with that this. Is okay. a sacrifice I will agree with humility. this. Yes, this wording I 100% agree with. Yes, it is possible that it ends up like slipping into the things that I'm doing, and it is possible that it that ends up being like a like something that I'm doing uh, subconsciously. But like even when you're bringing up the example and you're trying to downplay it to get me to like agree with it or trying to give me the example in a very good faith light, and you're saying like it's not like you're lying, I stop you and say, well, no, it is lying by omission, right? Like I'm I'm not trying to downplay these things, and I'm not trying to make it to where I come out in the best light my like entire brand has been that i am just going to like analyze these things yeah, we don't have to try for it to happen right usually it's probably not on purpose yes and so 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 that's why when i am approached with something where they say hey maybe you didn't do this the best way or hey maybe this wasn't the the like full and honest truth do you want to add anything here <clears throat> that's there for me to now try to downplay it there and to try to change things there that's not subconscious anymore because they're already telling me that i'm doing it in the first place this is a very conscious thing that i would be doing at this point so somebody comes and says hey tom here's this panel here's where you said x y and z and i respond to that that and i explain it there and i explain a story where i say yes that may not have been the best way to say it and that may have been misleading um and i, I probably shouldn't have said it that way that was irresponsible that's not the hang up though the hang up isn't that like now he's acknowledging that it was you know an over exaggeration or whatever the claim specifically is that he intentionally lied and you can prove very easily that he did in fact intentionally lie because when he got caught and they were like oh really you wrote academic papers can you send them to me instead of pumping the brakes and saying, oh no, yeah, that, I don't know why I said that. That was actually like fucking unhinged. Like I have people in my audience that said that they wanted to give it to professors, but I have like no way to verify this. When you have the opportunity to do that and you choose to not do that and continue to lean into the lie, that's intentional. And that is a lie. That is definitionally what a lie is. You are intentionally being distruthful, um, even when you know that it's wrong or you know that it's incorrect. Um, He's, he's just like such a little fucking weasel. And it's because he's like a professional fucking yapper is the way that he is able to like dog walk people in these conversations because he never shuts the fuck up. He just talks and 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 talks. And then by the time he's done, you're like fucking exhausted and you're like, Jesus Christ. Like, I don't even remember what I fucking said. I can barely remember what day of the week it is because you would never shut the fuck up, dude. Well, I could have just said, no, I actually did give numerous, uh, like a, numerous professors, numerous papers, and there's a bunch of other papers that I worked on at work. That's literally what he did. That is actually quite literally what he did. Um, I'm almost positive they watched the clip in this. If not, I, I guess I can go and look for it. I really don't want to, but this is exactly what he did. He said, I'm the expert. I wrote papers on this. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. And the dude goes, oh, you wrote papers on this that were in colleges? And he goes, yeah, and I can send them to you. That's a lie. That's a fucking lie, bro. And you got caught in the middle of your lie. You could have stopped yourself, corrected it, and then moved on. But instead, you consciously chose to continue to lie. Yes. And those were also given to him and blah, blah, blah. But I didn't do well, that. You could have. I did take the L and I did say, yeah, no, you didn't. I didn't say that in the best way. That was irresponsible. And I shouldn't have said it that way. But well, that was fact it's like if you get caught cheating on your wife and it's like, yeah, I guess I went to the bar with her. It's like, babe, I just came home and you're fucking dick deep in this girl. And you're like, yeah, but we just went out to go out and get drinks. Like, yeah, that's true. You're just like, you're taking the babiest little L where you're like, yeah, I guess I could have like exaggerated a little bit. It's like, no, bitch, you were fucking lying. That's what it was. Like, ugh. Be inaccurate, though. You have to. But it, I think it was not factually professors... inaccurate. Well, it was. Okay, so sorry. Sorry. Welcome back, Tepo. You buffed some of the things, right? Whereas you have, if you have a chatter or Will in this channel or whoever you spoke to, right? When you say 
the specialized and the gender thing and then the, the college thing. Nobody sees that. The other thing that really just like grinds my gears is that he says that he quote unquote specializes in gender, that that's his specialty. First of all, you don't have a specialty. You don't have any education. You don't have any specialty. The only thing that you have a specialty on is scaring the hose. That is what you are a professional at, first of all. Second of all, you're not an expert in gender because you pretend to have read Gender Trouble. That doesn't make you an expert on gender, okay? Like, I don't know what to say. Tom was baffled at the concept that non-binary is not reflexively androgyny. Tom was absolutely bamboozled by the concept. He thought that, like, he was like, when I see non-binary people that are presenting as their, like, a, a different gender than their gender assigned at birth, it's almost always trans women. I've never seen a trans guy who looks like a, or, uh, excuse me, an AFAB person who looks like a man who identifies as non-binary. It's always like girls with push-up bras and shit. And this is your gender expert, ladies and gentlemen. This is who I present to you. Your expert in gender is somebody who unironically has no idea that there are trans men alive right now who look like whole ass fucking men, but identify as non-binary. Rigby's in chat. That's Rigby. Rigby looks like a dude. Point blank fucking period. Rigby identifies as non-binary. Um, Gabriel, I can never remember his last name. He was the one that got banned from the White House for taking off his shirt. That dude looks like a dude. Through and through. That guy can grow better facial hair than Tom could ever fucking dream of. Okay? He's non-binary. Like, I... Your gender expert, ladies and gentlemen. Members of the jury. Your gender expert does not believe that there are trans men who pass as men who identify as non-binary. That is your gender expert, ladies and gentlemen. And in their head, as a friend or whatever, they all see you Wait, no, that's not talking what, that, to a professor, that is not correct. and the no, professor says, correct. wow, this is a great doc, and I'm going to teach this in my next semester. Yeah, that's, that's not what happened. Everyone... That's not what I said. That's not what I said happened. I said that I had a professor that worked with me that I asked a ton of questions about, like, gender and shit like that. I would ask him about language and bounce ideas off of him. That's what you said every time, and though. And, well, no, I'm, I'm, it is what I said with President Sunday and with Beckett. And also, a really good idea, or like a really good tell, um, and this is life advice for every all of my anti antisocial girlies in chat, okay? This is great life advice. You can tell when somebody is lying when they recount a story a different time every single time that they tell it. I don't have to imagine new facts if I'm telling you a story and it's true. I'm not going to fuck up like this bad every single fucking time i tell a story if i'm telling the truth like maybe if it's been a little bit maybe i'll misremember something and i'll be like oh yeah that's right i totally forgot about this part or whatever but i'm not going to consistently tell a different story to every single fucking person i tell about it excellent way to tell if somebody's a fucking liar okay and kid not kin when well, people ask me about this well yes again that's why i'm saying that i admit that like this is an irresponsible way of saying it but it's not factually inaccurate no it is not factually inaccurate whatsoever but if people want to ask for more information but it wasn't relevant at the time if you go look at the arguments just real quick you, when you we might go be look right, at, just hold you're on, right. just hold I'm on, saying, hold you're on. Technically it doesn't matter it doesn't matter that's not relevant <laughs> well, then why are you arguing the ar because matter. you're not listening it's not relevant to what i'm saying shut the fuck up oh my god soy dude when I'm making the it. argument God. in the moment where I say that I, uh, I such gave a pussy. professor uh, papers on, on linguistics that, or that it was used in universities, the point in there was not that I was the authority, which was the original argument, then eventually it changed to, well, maybe he's just not being factually accurate, which I was being factually accurate. The problem there was that I... And he's he answers this question, but he answers dishonestly. The question is, why did you bring up your authority in the first place then? If you weren't trying to appeal to authority and like flex on everybody and be like, no, I actually know what I'm talking about because I am linguist Tom, why the fuck would you ever bring that up? The only time that you ever bring up credentials like that in a debate is because you want to flex and you want to claim authority when you don't have it. Well, sometimes you do have it, but that's the only reason that you bring that up. There, and I swear to God, if they don't play the clip in this, I'm going to cry because there's no other reason for you keep, you're on a debate panel, you keep getting interrupted. People are like, no, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. And you pull out of your fucking Yu Gi Oh deck a trap card and you say, ah, oh, little did you know, I actually have a PhD in fucking neuro psycho pharma. Pharma pharmacological transmitters and you're wrong and they're like oh, like that's the only reason that you bring that shit up it's to like fucking own somebody that's like the only reason you bring that up it's to shit all over somebody because you're like oh actually just so you know like i know what the fuck i'm talking about that's the only reason you bring it up why else would you bring it up give me one reason why you would bring up your credentials to get somebody to believe that you know what you're talking about in a debate why it's to claim authority like okay 
I was, it wasn't actually relevant to the argument that I said, but I can understand how people could hear that and take it a different way as though I have published papers that are used in a curriculum in a university. That is directly implied. If I say, hey guys, um, I've written papers on gender. Who here thinks that I'm sitting here like fucking jacking off and writing Google documents for fun? If I say, yeah, I've written papers about the, the way that we use language to describe gender, you are automatically invoking like academia, automatically. And again, for somebody who claims to have this really deep understanding of linguistics, and he's just the smartest noodle, we're just like fucking idiot plebs in the presence of God King Tom. Um, you think that he would understand that that is directly an invocation of academia, directly. That is what that, is what that means. I write papers on da-da-da-da-da. Oh, I mean, sometimes I get drunk and I write things down on a sticky note so I can remember them later. Oh, okay. Fuck you. That would actually, uh, like, that would mean now that I might have some sort of authority or something. That's well, why I'm saying, yes, it's, it's not factually the accurate, in the but moment it is. that you were talking to, he saw it that way. When he said, he I would love, I talk to professors all the time, I would love to see work that is displayed by professors. And you said, absolutely, I'd be more than mm -hmm. happy to share that with you. There so you go, Ryle. The there you go, Ryle. Like you imagine that they would take it incorrectly. There you go, bud. That guy there in that is. argument took it that way, and then no. doubled down in front of no. him. No, hold on. What he, what you just said, has nothing to do with it being used in a curriculum or being published papers. Not so hey, talking about what that conversation said, you had with the guy. The argument yes, the hold on. You, you, yes, what you said was he took it that way, mm -hmm. and I'm saying no, he did not take it. Yes, as he did. It was published papers in a curriculum. But even if he did, it that's was, I honest to God. Yeah, we're biased here. We're all Tom haters here. But I want everybody to do me a favor and just, honest to God, clear your mind for a second. If I told you guys that I have written papers that are used in colleges and universities, ones in chat if you think that invokes some kind of academic rigor, twos in chat if you think that means like, oh, one time a professor on Twitter asked me about my thoughts on gender and he said, wow, wow, you're so smart, like, wow. Like, this directly invokes that it is used in an academic setting. Hello? Will you guys please ground me? Please, please tell me that I'm not fucking insane. If somebody tells me that they have papers that are used in college and universities, I'm assuming that they're using them in an academic capacity? Hello? Help me, Oprah Winfrey. Help me, Tom Cruise. Oh, Mr. Mollusk is bald, so he has to take Tom's side. That's fair. Okay, you get the pass. The professor was mantis in disguise. No, it was just a, a masculine looking trans person who maybe has taken estrogen or something and they're just making like a really gross face and jacking off. It wasn't mantis. Sorry for sexually harassing mantis again. Sorry, my bad. My bad, guys. It's not relevant to the argument that we were having in the moment. It was not relevant whatsoever because I didn't reference those at, in any way as an authority. I brought them up to just say, Yes, no, I have studied these things before. Your Tempo, you are so right. I'm not being fair. You're right. Allow me to amend my statement. It is totally possible, inconceivable to me, that Tom's papers were used in college and universities as an example of how not to cite your sources and how not to write any kind of persuasive essay. You're right. You're right. You are right. My bad. I'm sorry. I take that back. I was wrong. Also, Tom, if I'm calling back into the past to you, if you're hate-watching... That's how you do that when you get caught in a lie, just so you know. You are wrong when you say, I have not studied this at all. That's all it was. That's it. That was the end of it. It wasn't, it wasn't referenced over and over as an authoritative duped. thing at all. Do you think people can feel duped and really get a, uh, uh, really frost their ass when you technically, like if I say, can you see Discord right now? Where is Discord? Is it on your screen? Well, no, technically it's actually an LECD bolt and there's millions of them on your screen. Mm -hmm. well, it's like, okay, well, if I answered screen, I'm not wrong. And yeah, you're technically right. It is an LCD bulb, but you really—it really just makes me want to punch somebody in the face, right? Because this is such an underselling. Because it, it's not just frustrating; it's a lie. It's a malicious, and it's a lie. It's not just frustrating. It's not just that people get the wrong impression. It's that you're actually like misrepresenting your credentials, and you're misrepresenting like everything. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. It's like you're just being an ass. <laughs> okay, right? because again, this is you my problem is that you're I'm making a claim. Hold on, can I, can I'm I arguing against I, it, I, and you're not finish. engaging with it. I, I'm totally engaging. I'm just going to take me a second to get there. Can you hang okay. tight? Yeah, sure. I, I'm not going to attack you. So when when you're technically right, absolutely. The papers, Pussy, go the for college, the throw, Ryle. Absolutely. You will have a way. But that's the problem is, is that there's a way you can look at everything where it's also something else. Technically, it will be something else. So in every scenario, mm -hmm. you can find a way to be right. Yeah. And that's, exactly. that's a way you can trick yourself out of like having humility.
Same thing mm -hmm. with JSTOC. If you remember JSTOC, when he was accused of calling Anna a prostitute, even though his intentions and his mind state was not to call Anna a prostitute, what did he say? Do you remember? No. He said, I know everyone's going to take it that way, so it doesn't matter. I will bite that bullet. I called her a prostitute. And that's because what it really I doesn't matter at that point, because if everyone perceives it one way, well, okay, but then, no, 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 because you're making the argument that, that no, I wasn't, you know, being incorrect or creating a falsity. I was just being irresponsible. Correct. Correct. Well, that's not yes. irresponsible. So, no, it's yeah, lying. You it's say, lying. Hey, it's I, a uh, lie. I, I, I want to come meet you real quick. Where are you at? And I say, I'm at the grocery exactly. store. I'll meet you. I'll meet you in like 10 minutes. Okay. Fair. Then I get there and you're like, hey, what did you get at the grocery store? And I was like, oh, I didn't get anything at the grocery store. And you're like, well, you said you were at the grocery store. I'm like, yeah, I was, I was parked in their parking lot. I was smoking a cigarette real quick. And then I got back in my car and came and met you. Malcolm like, well, coded. It makes, it makes me think that you were getting groceries when you say that. that. What they said wasn't wrong. It doesn't have some like horrible outcome. And it wasn't even relevant when they said it, whether or not they were shopping. It's not relevant at all. Even though they may have taken it to mean something else, doesn't matter in that scenario, it's not relevant. Now, if instead on that panel, he You're said- You're saying it's irrelevant that you were potentially using making papers for college they were published wouldn't that isn't that a pretty important point when somebody's asking about your credentials That's no i'm saying light. that in the moment what i say could be taken and extrapolated to be something else that that is always true yeah but you were aware of how it was being extrapolated like that's the issue is that the guy was literally like oh you write papers for colleges and shit like send them to me i love reading like college level papers and shit like that and he said okay i'll send them to you like you were acutely aware that he was taking it in the way that you didn't want him to take it, where you know he believed that you were exaggerating your credentials or lie or you know whatever. He believed that you had the credentials that you were claiming. He called that to your attention, and then you doubled down. That's a knowing lie. That's a knowing full lie. True with everything that anybody says, but because one, I would I'd already explained these things tons of times to my audience, and two, because it was not an actual relevant point in the moment, that it's not something that I need to stop and give a full explanation of right then and there. But if somebody clips it and then puts it out out of context and makes it look like that's what I'm saying, then yes, now I can look at that and say, yeah, I can definitely see how people get that from that. And I'm willing to say that that wasn't the best way to say it. And that uh and that that's that is like the the correct answer to that not oh i lied because no technically i am correct in what i'm saying it is true in what it is that i'm saying it's just that no, people it's can not. take it a different way yes of course no it's not that it was just taken a different way it was taken a different way because of how you presented it because you knowingly misrepresented it like ah uh. well you can't be upset when people kind of feel like you're being slipped this too this too this too you can't be like fucking butthurt about it right like you, you have to just like live with the consequences of the way that you choose to talk about that kind of shit. That's why, I don't know if you guys remember, um, TBT to all of my Malcolm stands out there. Um, when I said that I thought that uh, No Flake had like a slam dunk case for defamation. And everybody was like, oh, so you have a legal background. I said, I don't talk about, you know, like my school or work or anything like that on stream. I just don't do it. And everybody was like, you understand like how people think that you're doing that. And I said, yeah, I understand how pe why people think that, but I just don't care. Like it's, I don't care if that's what they think. I'm being clear now, I, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but like, I'm not going to go into like, you know, what I went to school for and da, da, da. Like, I just, I don't care about that kind of shit. You have to like be able to bite it. And if I got like super fucking triggered and I was like, oh my God, everybody's like slandering me and like saying that I'm a liar and then blah, 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 blah. It's like you have to live with the consequences of how you choose to talk about that kind of stuff. Like those are your options. You have to accept, yes, um, I said this in a misrepresentative way or whatever the fuck. Uh, and I understand how people took it that way, um, but I don't care. You don't get to like fucking soy out and cry because it's like everybody thinks that I'm being malicious. And it's like it has been demonstrated that one, you are being malicious and two, you wouldn't eat it and you still won't eat it to this day like i don't know what to say i don't know what to say right obviously like you, when you're technically right but you make everyone feel duped then you can never be upset when people feel like you're being a little slippery very true what the problem is is that even like throughout this conversation we've kind of like changed what we're arguing about over and over where like no, the specific, very, uh, this is the this is the tom tactic we've changed topics so many times i can't even keep up and it's like no bitch we've been talking about the exact same thing the whole fucking time keep up with you to, oh. i haven't changed the topic once the, I'm not saying you change the topic. I'm saying oh. that like the way that the argument is going is that like, um, at, like I am saying yes, like because this could be taken a different way. I am willing to say that this is irresponsible. And at points you are arguing yes, but Tom, it could be taken a different way, and you have to you have to bite that bullet. And I'm saying yes, I am saying that. I'm saying that's the way. But then afterwards, 
No, it's I'm not how everyone, everyone else, took it. else took it in the moment. It's not it a year later yes. that's how everybody else took it. A year no. later. Why yes, did the guy say, hey, I work with professors all the time. I would love to see your paper. If that's not how he took it. That still, exactly works, how he took with it. What it that, that still works with what no, it, it is that's true. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know why you keep bringing that up. I've already argued against this. And you right. haven't responded to it. That's that is totally still fair. accurate. Totally with what it is that Let's I said. watch it together. Let's watch it together. Yes. And again, yes. remember with the Beckett, just like with the Beckett thing, maybe you'll prove me wrong. But if you wouldn't mind screen sharing that, pulling up that clip, and let's, and then I'll agree, or just like before with Beckett, I will say I was wrong. And I expect you to do the same, and I don't think that's unreasonable. Okay. All right. One second. Uh... Yes. Does Tom miss the irony of the fact that he, quote, miscommunicates so often while claiming to be good with language? Yes, that irony is hilarious. And additionally, something that I uh, believe with my entire soul, and you'll never be able to change my mind because I am uh, objectively correct, and anybody who disagrees with me is ontologically evil. Um, demonstration of mastery of a subject means that you can explain it to somebody and they can understand what you're saying. If I claim to be an authority on something or I claim to know a lot about a certain subject, but no matter how long I sit with you and I explain it to you and you can't understand what I'm saying, uh, short of like that person like being deaf or like not speaking the same language as you, you do not have proficiency in that subject. True mastery is being able to teach it and explain it to somebody else and have them understand it um, in whatever way they need to hear it. If you need to dumb down your language, you can still explain it. Um, if I need to think of an example or an analogy, um, then I know enough about it to explain it. Um, you have to be able to meet people where they're at and explain it to them in a way that makes sense in order to like truly understand a topic. That's just like, I don't know. There's like no other way around it. It's like if you are somebody who is claiming linguistic authority, if you're somebody who claims that you're an expert in fucking gender and we sit in a voice call together, how long were we in a voice Collectively, maybe like two and a half hours, we were in a voice call and I still just could not fucking parse what he was saying. And it's not that he's like this big brain fucking, you know, super mega smart like gender historian. It's just that he was so convoluted in the way that he explained it that it demonstrates that he has no fucking idea what he's talking about. He, uh, he does, I wouldn't even say that he has a mastery in like gooning or sex pestery because like no master goon would accidentally leak their goon folder on stream, but that's just me. No, he couldn't even comprehend his for you. No, exactly. Exactly. You guys, you guys are picking up what I'm putting down. We're on the same page. We all understand. We all understand. It's a liberal. It's, yeah, <laughs> I love liberal. He's a liberal. He's a liberal. He's a Of course he does. But so, yeah. so just real quick. As I fast forward to the point where I'm on there, that what when I went over this on stream, and the reason all this blew up again is because I went over it on stream and showed that I was off the panel for a, about an hour at this point, and uh, this guy made a bunch care. of claims that I had typed up on my. And then I want to hear the clip. That was the, it, I don't fit in anywhere. I don't fit in anywhere. Also, that, like, I, I'm, the I am pro life, but uh, I'm also like oh, super far left on trans yeah. issues. Yeah. I'm considered yeah. insanely progressive on gender issues. He was saying that I was like a right winger as well. You don't yeah, understand. Like he's being like like you literally don't understand. These people, these people come from a liberal left. Is somebody is somebody talking right now? Hold on, Kitten House, were you just talking? Oh, was I responding to your stream? Oh, I don't remember. Okay. I couldn't tell the difference. I didn't hear anything you were saying. Did you want to? Did you want me to pause <laughs> no, it real quick? Go ahead. Okay. Because uh, I have to listen to the YouTube. Doing... There's a delay, so. Okay. Uh, wait, I have it shared in Discord. Okay. Let me pull that up. That's better. Okay. Ah, uh, boomer hour. Come on, guys. Go ahead. That everything left of like center Democrat is left. Okay. For Tom, since he was like a rightoid like conservative, for him he's super progressive on gender issues. Oh, I know. That doesn't mean I he's mean, actually progressive. I'm, I'm hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It's yeah. liberal yeah. codes. Like everything okay. that's happening. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Okay. So listen. Earlier you were saying that I was moralizing the gender thing, which is just a lie. I never at any point moralized it whatsoever. What I was saying is that there's mm -hmm. a definition that I use. You guys kept making it about biology. I kept saying. Hold on. I kept saying. Where did the come from? Okay. So I work in linguistics. Because science and people Okay, I work in linguistics. Definitions, we come Don't to definitions based on colloquial usages, okay? Gender is a word that we use to describe masculinity and femininity. And so with masculinity and femininity, those are words that we use to describe what is more likely from a male or what is more likely from a female or just what we generally associate with uh, like social, um, uh, what do you call it? Like social norms. I have uh, papers on this. I have videos that are used in colleges and in universities. I the, Like gender is my specialty. And so be mindful that he, so Ryle, when you catch up here, you have to be really careful because Tom is actually a better liar than you think he is. Don't underestimate him. He hides his power level well. I think that he plays dumb to bamboozle people into thinking that he's an idiot. He still is an idiot, but you must be careful. Tom said he has videos, plural, videos 
that are used in colleges and universities and papers. Papers, more than one, that are used in colleges and universities. When he had his conversation with Beckett, he walked all, I think it was either Beckett or Sunday, he walked all the way back to the idea that there was a paper. When he said papers, he was referring to the multiple drafts of the gender document that took him more than a year to write, by the way. This fucking 12-page Google document took him more than a year to write, by the way. He's... He's also lying and saying that there are videos that are used in colleges and universities. So you must be mindful of the tricks of the Tom, okay? Because this guy's a fucking snake, all right? He is not only lying about the gender doc, he's knowingly lying about the videos and he's knowingly lying about the additional papers. So even if you even if you lose on the point that this one singular paper one time touched the desk of a university professor, if you have to eat that, okay, whatever. He lied about the papers and he lied about the videos. Okay? So even if he could get you on that, which he can't because that is a fucking lie, if he could get you on that, he also still lied about the videos and the additional papers. Okay? So would love to see them I, and read them. Oh, you're working on a PhD in Tom 10. I love that for you. I can't wait for the Tom 10 doc. Let's go. I, I can send it to you. Yes, I can send it to you. I like this send is my to me. this I, is I, what I I focus on. I read on. and so talk am, to professors who deal with this shit. Like I'd love to read the papers that you're are talking all, about because it sounds like fucking garbage. Are all yes. Yeah, so this is just so fucking embarrassing. You, this guy one heard you say that your papers and your videos are used in academic settings. Two, he rightly assumed that you were talking in, like, an academic setting, not just, like, a professor one time, like, complimented your fucking schizo document. Three, he inquires further to say, can you send them to me? I work with professors. Four, you affirm, yes, I can send the multiple things to you, not the one gender doc, the multiple things to you. I can send them to you. And five goes on to elaborate that not only are these his academic fucking uh, magnum opuses, he is also specializing in gender. That's five right there where you could just fucking crucify that guy. You got to get the fucking Pontius Pilate spear and poke a, hup a couple more holes in Jesus for the rest of the fucking nails to go in there, okay? Like, crucify this bitch. All he does is fucking lie. Got it? Do you want me to play it again? No. Nope. Yep. So let's start at the top. So I work in linguistics. We can admit that's a misrepresentation, right? No. no. Tempo, no. Why? Why would that be a misrepresentation? Work would be present tense, right? Well, sure. At the time, it was my career. I worked it. And then, Ryle, my king, you biffed it. You went for the, did you currently work in linguistics? There were five juicy, delicious, tantalizing, big, fat fucking lies right in front of you. And you walked into the trap. You were bamboozled. You were Tom Fooleried, sir. You walked right into that one. Because it's not about whether or not he worked in linguistics, it's that he has experience in it. Because if somebody is trained in psychology, they're not necessarily going to continue to call themselves a psychologist, but that's a, that's a moot point. Because you're moving on to the greater context, which is claiming authority, because he, he very clearly says he doesn't have academic uh, experience. You have to get him on the smaller points. You can't go, you can't go right for the mega flashing hitbox right in the middle of your screen you have to look for the other ones okay fuck ryle this place is for a while I, I i was not presently doing the job but it was my career at that point and hadn't decided that i was done with it and was stepping away i was still yeah uh, ryle biffed on this yeah, one guys on about going back. you had him you had him twist his dick grab his dick and twist it you fucking had him dude you fucking had him ryle oh hindsight's 2020 i know that i'm like armchair like fucking uh sideline backseat driving you right now and i i understand i get it dude i definitely do but fuck ryle you had him but it was like a, i've okay. been doing this for a long time so fair okay so we could say that's not accurate is that fair to say sure if you want to say that that's not accurate because i'm not doing the job in that moment i don't think that's actually true i think if somebody's a pastor at a bunch of different churches and then they're not pastoring at a, a pastor doesn't invoke any kind of like significant um, like education or training, especially if you're a lay person, um, because like lay people don't know that you go to like fucking seminary school, right? So yeah, even you got to use a different example. You got to use like a psychologist. You have to use somebody, use something that requires some kind of academic backing. The church in the moment, but they still say I'm a pastor or I I pastor churches. That that would still be 100% accurate. But if you if that's, I I think that that is like really splitting hairs to to say that at that point.
And well, so if I type into Google to find linguistics, what do you think it's going to say? Uh, the scientific process of studying language. Gotcha. Or studying language through a scientific process, generally. Right, syntax, phonomics, semantics. Uh, yeah, it'll give you a bunch of different of types. There's so, a bunch of different studies of linguistics. So the first example, right, is not super indicative, but as a professor of linguistics, right? Typically, right, now I know there's another, I think it's linguist that you pull up. I've seen you pull up the definition for, and that will say someone who knows two languages. Right, I only pulled but, that up because uh, uh, President Sunday and Rezi kept saying that that was ridiculous, that I would call somebody who has studied other languages a linguist and i and they're a linguistic consultant tom a linguistic consultant they're consulted by firms to do fucking interpretations and shit like that they're like interpreters that's like the bougie like fucking i'm applying for jobs and i want to fluff up my resume way of saying that you're a fucking interpreter it's a linguistic consultant oh my fucking god like did you even try and so I was showing everybody, not only is this like a correct usage of the word, but if you look up the definition, it'll even tell you that this is the most common usage of the word, the most popular linguist. It's not the common. Are called linguists because they- No, that's not the most common usage of the term linguist. The most common, the common usage of the term linguist is somebody who studies language. I speak multiple languages. Right, but it seems like when you invoke something like linguistics, that is different. You agree? Uh, no. No, no, no. Well, so uh, the no. scientific study of language doesn't sound anything like I like speaking two languages. Well, that that is a scientific study of language when you are not only taking two languages. The language, not scientific. Yeah. So when you when you are not just taking the language that you have now in the understanding of the words, but now you are comparing and contrasting to another language to now understand that language and those words as well. And the so like uh, Rosetta Stone the is a scientific process. Yes, yes, and the that. syntax, it 100% is. This is part of my problem, is you guys literally don't even know what the subject is that we're you talking guys, about. Have I been like anybody else? I didn't spurg out and call you a bunch of names. I've I'm been not spurging out either, and I'm not calling you names either, but when I say you guys, say you guys. Yes, when I say you guys, I'm pairing you with the other people who don't know what it means to talk about a scientific study of language. This is, yes, I How do you know what you I know when I'm just debating you about the definition I found on Wikipedia? You can't know the depth of my knowledge, Tom. I, the, are you saying that just now, the argument that you made was not meant to imply that you do not believe when you say, I don't believe that? That it's, I'm not supposed to assume that you don't believe that. That's well, no, no, no. what you're telling I'm not saying that. I'm saying you applied that to my depth of knowledge and then applied me and said, I'm just like the rest of them. When I felt like every time I've given an example, it's painted you in a neutral or good light, right? Sure. I've come in here in good faith. So yes. then when every time when we get to the end of an argument or maybe we disagree, you go, see, this is the problem I have with you guys. As if I, yes. because I made a bad argument or because you disagree, I'm now like everybody else because you disagree. Well, That's not the, uh, when I said you guys, did it have anything to do with being bad faith or painting me negatively? No, Aren't it had to do with whether faith? or not. Oh my I, God. I don't think every. Every single time that I get in a disagreement, you guys, it's really convenient that like everybody that comes in and shits on me is like literally Hitler reincarnated. And then, you know, Barbie comes in here and disagrees with me and I'm like, God, it's just like you guys, all you like fucking Hitler lights. And Barbie's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm not like Hitler. And I'm like, I'm not saying you're like Hitler. I'm just saying that like, it's you guys, you know what I mean? It's like, behold, your linguistic king. Everybody's bad faith. No, I've talked about the this other many people times. you're talking about that you're comparing me to, of course, Tom. Don't, let's not I, be I know. I don't damn. think everybody is bad faith. No, I, I didn't like, say everybody, I, like, but people you're comparing I, me to. Just, no, I am not comparing you to people based on, on whether or you not you're me a compliment. Is that what you're saying? You obviously no, are. it's not one or the other. It, it is the fact that you there is a group of people who keep trying to tell me that I am not a thing or that I do not understand that thing. And then when we get into what those words mean, it turns out those people don't even have like the. I didn't the, say I had a, a, a knowledge base. I'm debating whether I think because I know that you didn't. Because typically, when you learn these things like linguistics, it's not you don't get the definition You're all based, little on what you do based on Google's definition. It's because you went and spent four or eight years learning this stuff, right? That's typically why when you say field of study, right? It's not be, like I would say sales, but I would never say I have a, like and I sold marketing. I would never say in the field of marketing or did study of the field of marketing because that invokes some sort exactly. of formal education. Yes, I correct. To, I know you don't agree, but I feel like everyone listening does. Uh, again, in this context, when we're in the space, I agree that that is what we're communicating. But when you ask me, the space do you think earth, Rosetta right? Stone? No, I mean, like in like Twitch politics, where we have debates that necessitate studies and academia and authorities and shit like that. That of course, that's how it's going to you be. Think taken. those don't exist outside of Twitch? Can you? I was gonna say, can you imagine how fucking rotted your brain has to be to think that the only time that it's appropriate to invoke like credentials is on a fucking Twitch poll debate? Twitch poll has been dead for like fucking two years, dude. Like nobody gives a fuck. What are you fucking talking about? Like it is so telling that your greatest fucking achievement is that you can trick a bunch of like fucking ethos in your discord server into believing that you have expertise that you don't have and that's like the limit of why you give a fuck about expertise like oh well in this space that's highly this and highly that i dare you to go to a college campus and tell people that you're a fucking linguist they will laugh you off of the fucking campus
Are you kidding me? This is and again, it's just such a it's it's actually really sad that like the the length the length of the impact that he thinks that faking credentials has is limited to Twitch politics. Like that's all he has going for him. He has nothing in his life except for fucking Twitch politics, which doesn't even fucking exist anymore. Oh my god, bro. Please put me down. I think that those exist outside of Twitch Bowl, but I think that when we look at the most common usages of the word linguist, when they do... Barbie, if you want to come on, you can. I'm in Discord. You're allowed to visit me for a short time. ...apply to people who just speak more than one language, that it seems to say otherwise, that it's not about academia, and it is about the study of language. What do you think the study of means? What do you think most people use the study of? It's blank. When they're saying that, what do you think that means? It means, that you are, it means that you are learning about the thing, the subject, it means... Yeah, learning about the subject almost always in an academic capacity. If I say that I study something, not a single person is like, oh wow, Malcolm is reading like fucking WebMD, he's studying to be a doctor. Not a single fucking person thinks that. Like, you are actually delusional. You are actually delusional. You're either severely mentally ill, delusional, or malicious. And I would say that, of all things, you're probably malicious. Maybe a little bit mentally ill, but mostly malicious. Because not a single soul that is alive is going to hear you say, I study blank. And they're going to go, oh, so you read Wikipedia a lot. No, they're going to think that you're doing it in an, in an academic capacity. Always. Crack. Crack we're smoking. Since that you are understanding what other people have said about the subject. Or you went to college? Neither. You don't think it invokes any sort of, when somebody says the study of, or to study in a field, do you think that means that you got a training course at your intro to sales job? Again, I've never referenced that as why I ever I didn't say that you did. I'm saying, what do you think most people picture in their mind? We're talking about the average person right now, outside of Twitch poll. Not what you've referenced. This is not an indictment of you. I'm just asking, what do you think people see in their mind, right? With language, we're talking about like... So you're asking, what, what if I picture? tell somebody, I study language, you're asking, what do I think they picture? No, study linguistics. If I say I study linguistics, I think generally, if, so, if you say I study linguistics, people would think that you might be going to a college, but there are lots of other things that that could apply to as well. And I think if you said, no, like actually, what? I, I actually uh, work with a, a group and we all sit at the library every week and we all study language together and break it down and try to like come up with understandings right. of this, that they would say, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. I, that may have not been my first. No. Because we laugh at people that do their own research. We laugh at people that are self-taught experts. Like that, yes. That, and again, linguistic expert here. When somebody says, I'm not getting vaccinated because I've done my own research on mRNA vaccines. What do you immediately think of? This is colloquially how this word is used. When somebody is like, a novice doing their own research on their own. Sure, there are situations where I could see somebody doing their quote unquote own research and coming away with like a greater insight or a greater under, a greater understanding about a topic. Colloquially, that's not how that how that works. And especially if you're using it in an academic sense that's invoking some kind of academic credential. Like if I said, I study chemistry. You guys are like, oh wow, Malcolm's getting his degree in chemistry. But in reality, I have a meth lab in my garage. Like you, he is actually fucking stupid. He's either malicious or stupid. Probably both. They're not mutually exclusive, but it's like, that is a million percent what that invokes. Like, there's no way around that. That is absolutely 150 million gazillion trillion bedillion percent what people are imagining when you say, I study blank. Stop, but that, that definitely applies. They wouldn't feel misled. Uh, yeah, they would if I went to the fucking doctor and the doctor was like, yeah, I studied medicine and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then he's like, yeah, so I watched a bunch of YouTube videos so I could learn how to do your fucking appendicitis. Y yes. What are you talking about? People would feel misled. People would also feel horrified that you were allowed any kind of say in any kind of professional matter ever. What are you talking about? What? Now, where it has to be then in this video that you said that, right? Sorry? based on what you just explained the follow-up that so now we agree that you understand that most people would agree that invoking study combined with something like linguistics right or some sort of formal use of a word regarding a mm -hmm. field not so not just marketing right obviously so linguistics is a specific term a scientific study of something so when you say the study mm -hmm. of linguistics you are invoking yep. something in somebody's mind most people think college right so you're probably invoking some sort of authority or giving someone the feeling even if you didn't mean to the feeling that you have an authority in x field so what's up combat that you would have to give a caveat afterwards. So after you say here on this stream, the study of linguistics, right, or worked in linguistics, right? 
you need to caveat on afterwards. Does that agree? Not, no, not if I say I worked in linguistics. Your question was about whether or not I just say I study linguistics. But if you I can say I, I, uh, I work in healthcare, but you're actually a fucking janitor at a hospital. That's like a pretty good example of what Tom is doing. Yeah, dude, uh, I work at the White House. People are like, oh, are you like a, you know, like a, a special agent? Are you like, you know, what's it called? I keep, I want to say social services. That's not what it is. The Secret Service, the Secret Service, Jesus Christ. Oh, do you work for like the Secret Service? It's like, no, I actually come once a week and mow the lawn. It's like, yeah, he is aware that he is invoking a very specific set of credentials and he doesn't care because he wants to fan authority on the internet for good boy points. He knows, he knows, everybody knows. Yeah, guys, I work for NASA. Oh my God, that's so cool. Yeah, um, I scrub toilets. Okay. I say I work well, in English. In the same sentence that you're talking about papers, trade, you are correct. literally just says that you work in that. You are, cor you are correct. And I count myself. <clears throat> but in the same sentence, you say papers published at correct. colleges and universities. Mm -hmm. They may not be published, right? There's a, a way that pedantically I could be wrong. But the broad idea is that in the same sentence where you're giving the idea that you're doing linguistics, you're also saying you're invoking colleges and universities. And that's giving somebody an image in their mind. Yes. So again, so it would it, it matters if it has some sort of outcome. When I give you the grocery store example, I'm and saying, yes, it, that person understands. Fuck me, stop doing that. It does have an outcome. The outcome is that people misplace their trust in you as an authority. Just like the dude on the panel who was like, oh, shit, that's actually really dope. Can you send me your shit? And instead of correcting him, you were like, oh, hell yeah, brother. I can send you all my linguistic papers. That... It, like they misunderstood and that the other person may have said something that made them think that, but it didn't have some sort of outcome to where there was actually like a... Doing White House lawns is probably pretty prestigious. Well, yeah, you'd have to be really good at cutting grass. I would imagine that you would have to be like an expert lawn manicurist to work at the fucking White House. I would, I would agree with that. Uh, the misunderstanding actually mattered. So where I'm saying this in, in this debate, if at some point he is now treating me as though I'm an authority or I am like well, referencing myself or outcome, referencing... Well, so so what, what, let me just explain conference. real quick, because there's there's two things here. It's not just the people that I'm debating, but there's also the people who are in the audience. And so if that happens, well, where I was like referenced as some sort of authority, well, let me outcome. just explain real quick. Just if there was some sort of outcome here where he did think that I was an authority he and did. started referencing my papers as authoritative or referencing me as authoritative, then yes, now I need to explain. But outside of that, if he doesn't, then in this interaction, it doesn't have any sort of consequence to it. Now, it could have a consequence with my audience to where now they think I'm uh, an authority and now they think that I have published papers that are used in curriculums. But I, again, I have the pattern of behavior of like correcting that many, many times to where that's not. No, something that's he doesn't happen. actually. That's funny. Right. So the the we're not going to be able to point to an outcome. And that's not a good way to judge these situations. You would never look at the outcome to judge whether a decision to make an action is right or wrong. <clears throat> like saying, I won the lottery. Do you think it's good to buy lotto tickets? Well, why would we look at the outcome of a lotto winner to know whether it's good to buy lotto tickets? Obviously, they're going to say yes, because one, they're dopey because they bought lotto tickets. So mm -hmm. we wouldn't look at the scenario and say, yes, I Miss, you know, however you apply the, that that situation that you misspoke, lied, white lie, or uh, irresponsible, however you'd like to apply the label to that, regardless of the outcome, it could be in somebody's minds. So why would we look at the outcome? Because we can't always point to it. So that would Very be true. A, a well, no, we 100% can't. Way of getting a no, we can't. Because if I shoot somebody and I shoot them uh, just perfectly and they had a tumor and they didn't know they had a tumor and the bullet obliterates the fucking tumor and it eviscerates it. They're now cancer free. Um, but my, the outcome was obviously that by shooting this person, I inadvertently cured their cancer. You wouldn't look at the outcome of that situation and say that was a good act because the outcome was good. You have to look at the action itself and the action itself of lying or telling a lie or intentionally being misleading is bad because you're you're misrepresenting the facts of a situation or the facts of your your knowledge or anything like that in order to gain the upper hand in a conversation that's bad. It doesn't matter if there wasn't a bad outcome. The act itself is bad. This is like utilitarian fucking slop. Or not utilitarian, excuse me, consequentialist. It's consequentialism and it's slop. We 100% can. I'm saying that he can have that misunderstanding. It doesn't matter even if that's what he got from it because it doesn't actually have the outcome to where I'm treated so differently. So it's okay to lie as long as there's no bad outcome? No, we already agreed that it's not a lie, that it is technically true, that it is possible they could misunderstand it, but that it's still true. No, it's not a so lie by omission. It, okay. is it is a lie by omission. Well, I would say that it's a straight up fucking lie. I'll be more aggressive with my language. I'll, I'll say that I think it's a straight up fucking lie. But 
Tom said earlier that it was, in fact, a lie by omission when they were doing like their Pizza Hut deal. So he actually completely agrees with this idea that this, in fact, would be considered a lie by omission, but whatever. Like saying I was at the grocery store. It's okay to be irresponsible. It's like saying I'm at the grocery store and the person thinks that I'm at the I don't need shopping. the analogy. That, I'm being very specific. That, I agreed with you. I conceded the lie. It's not a lie. So I agreed to your word. I don't need an analogy, right? You said it was irresponsible. So you apply that. That's all. I don't need, I don't need to be explained. Okay, so that scenario where there's not the outcome, it doesn't like a, it doesn't have to have like a difference. But if we took them saying that they went to the grocery store and then now we transplant that somewhere else to where it actually has an outcome, like so if there's no bad outcome, he was okay at the grocery store. Is that his correct? wife heard his wife heard that he went to the grocery store and now she thinks, oh, well, I don't have to go pick up milk <clears> now because he's at the grocery store. So he won't bite this bullet because you know he knows it's like an insane position that you know consequentialism is like typically pretty absurd. Um, but yeah, this is 100% true, is that you can't look at the outcome of a situation to determine if it's good or bad. Because you can have bad acts that lead to good outcomes. And he won't bite this bullet, but... So he's going to get it. Yes, now there is some sort of outcome to where he would so, need so, to correct that. And if he chose not to, now it's obvious he's being dishonest. So it's okay. So, so is it okay to be dishonest if nobody finds out? And there's, and there's no, no bad, bad outcome. outcomes that we can point to. That doesn't mean that there aren't bad outcomes. We just can't perceive them. They could be in other people's minds, but we can't show any evidence of it. So the example that I just gave was to say that it's hold on, not I dishonest. Your analogy. You got to answer me. You didn't. Me. You didn't. I, the I just gave you a question. That I, hold on. Just listen question. to the fucking word that I'm saying. I okay? asked you a question. Listen, hold on. I listen to you. I know. And I'm responding to it. Oh Chill. my god. My goodness. Every fucking time. I what I just explained is why <laughs> it is so not. He's so soy, dude. He's so uh, soy. Dishonest. Can you believe that the hose? That Tom has to fight the hose off, like with a bat. He has to fight the hose off with a bat, like this guy right here, the epitome of the Rizzler, live in action. This is. Ladies in chat, how are you doing right now? How are you hanging in there? Because wow, is it hot in here or what? And then you said, okay, so then that means we can we just, just be dishonest I, I got as that. long as there's that. no... I got from that that it was okay. You said, well, I would only need to fix something if, like you, like you said with the groceries, I was following, that, that you would have to go then get groceries or if somebody needs milk or whatever, okay. right? You'd have I, to you're going to have to let me finish because you're still confused. Please just let me fucking finish the sentence. You, I, well, I gave an analogy that explained why it is not... not just talk please the conversation. just listen to what I'm saying. I had an analogy that explained why it is not dishonest. That was my explanation, is that it is not dishonest. And that, and then I gave you an example where it would be dishonest based on the I'm outcomes. White cloth. And then you replied by saying, oh, so then that means it's just okay to be dishonest. Well, based on my analogy, it's not dishonest. So Barbie's coming out as a lesbian right now. <laughs> I don't know what your question is asking now. <coughs> it's not dishonest. Well, because we're not talking, because the analogy isn't the crux. The analogy is a diversion from the point, right? When you your say question was thing, about outcomes. Hold That's on, what I, I responded to. I heard you out. Um, Regarding the statement you made in the call, your point to refute mine was that, well, there's no, I, don't, I can't, we can't point to a bad outcome in that call from me saying the thing, right? So that's a refutation was what you were making. And I'm saying, what if in his mind, he judges you differently and sees you as dishonest, but he doesn't say it, he doesn't act differently. And the bad is that he treats you as an authority because he pictured you as an authority because that's the, the, the way that you presented yourself, words yes. You. Yes. Those are two ways that you can not point to a bad outcome, but still do a bad. Okay, so uh, that's not true because as soon as he treats me as an authority, that is when it necessitates a correction. That's where I need to change what it is. And he did. He was like, dude, that's so sick that you write papers. Let me read them. And instead of saying, no, actually, you know, I kind of over exaggerated that. I was a little overzealous with my statement there. You were like, oh, hell yeah, dude, another fucking big brain, fucking God, assure my ideas with the shit. Mm. And give more context. No, no, no. So we're talking about your choice of actions. Is that is it good or bad to make that choice of actions? And you're skipping to the outcome. And I'm saying, yes, I'm before telling you, get you to the outcome, but when you're choosing to make an action, right? How do we determine whether that's good or bad? You can't look at the outcome first. Kyle's just or yeah, Ryle's just right. Is just saying. correct is here. When I say that, there is nothing wrong with it being said there in that context, and that it changes if I like because that is not dishonest. But it would be dishonest if he treated me as an authority afterwards. Then yes, he I did. would need to give more context now. That that is what I'm saying. I'm just, I don't know um, how to further point it out. What your, the logical conclusion of what you're saying is it's okay to be dishonest. It's not dishonest. This outcome. is what we're talking about. You keep skipping past that. It, I'm telling it you, it is not dishonest. Become, it, it doesn't become dishonest when he acts differently. It's dishonest when you make the action. If you made that action in a vacuum and whatever, right? And you're saying your papers at universities and colleges, you know that's not true. Okay. If what I actually said was, I don't have any papers at any universities. And I have no, no professors have ever used them, but he took what I said as though I said, I do have papers at universities and I, and professors do use them. Okay. Well, 
right now we're not talking about like what I said. Now we're just talking about how he took it. So now am I supposed to correct him even though I don't know that he took it in a very different way? He did take it that way because he inquired about the papers. Like maybe he is just stupid. I don't know, dude. Fuck me. Then what it was that I said? No, because I understand why he doesn't have any hair. All this big brain shit just fucking fried it right off. That's what happened. Because only because you can't critique the decision of the actions, right? Based on a, a, misunder, a misunderstanding of the outcome, right? So when you're looking at what action to take, you can only look at the probability of outcomes, right? And if I know nine times out of ten people are going to take it as X, well then I'm not going to say it unless I want them to think X. Okay, so you're just saying that somebody could get the wrong idea, and that in and of itself, even though it doesn't mean anything, there's no consequences from it, and there's no bad outcomes. That somehow I, without well, me even knowing that that's the case, there aren't bad outcomes. Uh, no, I, I can't say that. I, I, I am saying you that you guys had any are... bad outcomes in the last three weeks from the papers thing and the college thing. Even if I... it's old, an old critique doesn't make it not a critique. No, I'm saying that I could just go grab any random clip of anybody saying anything and start turning. This is his audio, by the way. It's not, not it me. Actually happened. And so this is him, not me. About, well, did it actually happen? That's the conversation. And you're, you're not arguing acting as though not, just because agreeing, people claim happened. it happened. No, I'm saying you guys just claim it happened. And now we're having a conversation about whether or not it did. Your mic is, uh, for the audience, your mic is fluffing. If you want to unplug and plug again. I think, it, I think it's fixed. Thank you. You're better. <coughs> um, go on. I think you're in the middle of a sentence. My disagreement is with whether or not what you are claiming actually happened. And this is my issue. Is I feel like you're skipping past it over and over. My argument is that it is not dishonest, that it is correct, and that I would only need to correct this if somebody misunderstood it. So let, let's say, for example, your grandma has a jar full of quarters. They go to the sky. Every day you take away a quarter. But at the end of the day, they're infinite. They go to the sky, right? There is some number. It's not true infinity. But you're taking one away every day, and she never notices until she dies. Is that theft? Uh, just taking a quarter from her every day. I don't think I didn't. I don't think the quantity matters. But if you want to, I thought yeah, no, it doesn't matter if you're taking something from her. Then it's theft. Gotcha. So why isn't misrepresenting misrepresenting? Regardless I'm telling you that I didn't misrepresent it. This is what I keep telling you. You are arguing past that. I, I don't. He did misrepresent it. He said I have papers and videos that are used in universities. Um, he does not have papers or videos that are used in universities. It is absolutely a misrepresentation. Like, I would say it's a lie. I would go further. But yeah, yeah, like definitionally, yeah, even by everything that he's agreed to so far, he is just like straight up fucking lying. Um, but okay. Yeah. I don't know how many times I have to tell you this. I don't know how many different ways I have to say it. I am telling you that it did not okay, misrepresent that, that, anything and that it's not destroy dishonest. me. I am Ryle Kittenhouse. Destroy me. Which colleges and universities were they at? I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say if it ah, did, like, fucking liar. What a fucking liar. Because uh, now you're changing your to whole argument. Now, before you're saying what I communicated is different than what I meant to communicate. Whereas I'm telling you, it is what I communicated. But now you're denying whether or not the thing even happened. That's totally different. If you want to go to that, that's an insanely different argument. It's an insanely different, Tom. Sorry? I'm pretty sure we touched on it. I, I, I don't think you're, you're engaging here. Because you agree. At what point did He's we not. touch on whether or not this actually happened? At what point? many times when we reviewed the clip when i first brought it up when i quoted it when we disagreed on the quote assuming we're not talking about a fourth dimension i assume we all agreed that it happened yes that's what i'm saying we all agreed that it happened that's what i'm saying and now you're disagreeing with whether or not the papers were actually used in a university and you're changing the argument to that get him again ryle this is where you got to go because he's saying papers again there were no papers there wasn't even a singular paper now come on ryle of whether or not i communicated no, no, the question what i was, intended to whether it's dishonest and i was giving an example of dishonesty i'm not changing the argument it's part of the argument Look at example, him. He's he Your just he can't keep up. Dishonest, based on the fact that I was communicating something different than what I intended to. That was your argument this entire time. That has been your argument. I don't know how. Like we can rewind and start from the beginning if you'd like. That has been your argument the whole time. Is it is dishonest because I'm communicating something different than what I intended to? That has been your argument. No, no. I'm the argument has been that you lied. Exactly what you intended to do. You intended to give a credential because otherwise, why bring it up? It's not even related. It's talking about uh, what, what reason did I give you? What reason did I give you for why I brought it up? You didn't give a reason. Give me your answer instead of a soliloquy. Well, no, I'm, I'm asking. Why, I already I already explained why I brought it up. I explained it numerous times. To give an authority. No, that's not what I said. That's not what I said. No. I'm asking, what did I say to you? What reason did I give you for I why I brought that up? I just gave you the answer. Why would I have a different one if you asked it twice, Tom? Okay, so you think that I told you. I brought this up to be an authority. That's Are your you answer. Are confused about what I just said? I'm asking you. Is that what you're telling me? I already gave you the answer. Did you mishear me? Because I can repeat it if you misheard. But I think you heard me. But what you're trying I'm to do clarifying. is trying to drill into a point. No, so I'm, no I'm not drilling I'm into anything. You for the no, I'm not drilling twice. anything. I'm not drilling into anything. I'm, I'm clarifying. Drilling, Tom. Give me right now. There's no drilling. I'm, I'm asking you. It's consensual. Drill all you want. I like Ryle. He is fucking funny. I said, he is I fucking funny. I like this guy. Uh, to be an authority, or if you're saying that you think that's why I brought that up, I'm asking, do you think I said that, or are you stating that as a 
as a, a statement for yourself. What I said was, is I just want to hear your answer so you can get at what you're getting okay. at because right now we're okay. spinning in the mud. That's fine. So uh, initially this <clears throat> whole thing came up because I was going over the fact that there, uh, I jumped off of a panel. All right, we're looping hella hard, you guys. That's that's pretty much most of everything that I wanted to go over was the linguist stuff because then he gets into it with like fucking Beckett. He gets into it with, uh, I think fucking origin of logos comes on for a little bit or origin of language. I don't even remember what the fuck that guy goes by anymore. That guy's also a silly goose. Um, that's really- but Previously we had a harder time. Yeah, that's really it. That's really all of it. Um, they just like loop and loop and loop and loop and loop and loop endlessly on the same thing. And it's just, it's waffling, it's weaselly, it's lazy, it's it's pathetic. Like anybody that has any, like the cognitive ability of like a fucking amoeba or higher is very, very acutely aware that all of it is bullshit. But whatever, whatever. That is the Tom Tent. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the Tom Tent. I hope everybody enjoyed. I hope everybody enjoyed getting their brain just fucking ass blasted with the same point over and over and over and over and over again. Is everybody having fun? Are you having fun?